Click the link below to download this as a podcast. Carl, I know you like to be kept abreast of all the latest breaking science news. Did you read recently about the blind mice that they have been able to make see again? And um, hopefully, they're, they're, whatever they did, which allowed these mice to be able to see again, they're hoping to be able to do with humans in maybe about 10 years' time, or at least begin tests. Extraordinary, isn't it, to be able to, I mean, to be able to cure blindness would be a <laughs> remarkable achievement in science. It is, but it's just that thing how they say they've done it on mice and what have you. Yeah. If I was blind and I went in for the meeting, mm. the doctor, yeah. and they said, do you want yours doing? And then they said, like, mm. I've done it on mice, that wouldn't be good enough for me. I'd say, look, when the blind fella gets in, don't say we've done it on mice, just say we've done this on eyes. <laughs> Because what eyes? Just say just a pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you say mouse's eyes, it's like, well, it's, it's not the same. And it no. sort of, it would make me go, I'll leave it. Yeah. And then you, you, you wake up and you can see, but you've got very tiny eyes right in the... Uh, the you've put in mice eyes! <laughs> I'm scared of cats! It's just eyes. I think I just don't like having my eyes messed with, and even if it was blind, you know, I just, I, I wouldn't like it. Right. Uh. And I think mine are more active than most, my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> um, well, I went for a what's-her-name, Steve, you don't know. I, I've, I've had uh, problems with my legs. Oh, no. Christ almighty. He's the same, what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a 70 year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week. He goes, no, his leg's Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. I don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. He's going, oh, right. Christ oh. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30 odd years, I've been working hard and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, oh. 33. Sorry to start off with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? Well, I just have. I sort of uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm well, just you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> pitting about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, OK, so you've been working for 15 years then, OK, good. Yeah, right. but I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I? And that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. It all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked my height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, eh? Like it's a classic story that everyone should know. Everyone and knows, also right. the phrase, kicking my own height. Yeah. No, Explain so. what you mean. Just kicked me out when I was when I was kick a kid. Your, no one understands. You kicked Carl. your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I if kicked you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go. I kicked me height. So you were so you're four and a half foot, and you put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right. Okay. <laughs> Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go get <laughs> Carl Pilkington to kick his height. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. He wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> so why, why did he you fall over? Tickets. The neighbours were cracking <laughs> up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, did, you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have to kick the height. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> what did that... Like, what the fuck did that look like? He's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, in my, you, 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 it stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ But you almighty. didn't think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like a Hitler salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back yeah. and uh, and I did some damage, I think. Yeah. And it's because Definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had, like, a trap nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done. Because when you get older, I mean, it was the kidney stone thing. Once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think... Got to start looking after your body. Do you think you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for fifteen years? <laughs> well, you just... think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking <laughs> of Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then. I'm just saying. You've yeah. Got to look after yourself. You know, if there's anyone listening, you could out always there, hop. Who's got a problem? Get it sorted. I'll tell you what though. If you have to fight off danger and you kick them, <laughs> put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella to, uh, like, a professional, uh, leg rubber. Um, a professional leg rubber, yeah. And he's, uh, he, he sort of said, 
a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of like podcasts? I said, "Am I in charge of my brain, or is my brain in charge of me?" Yeah, do you remember what I said? It's the most stupid thing you've ever said. Yeah, well, well, listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber, professional leg rubber, yeah, right, and he is professional. Yeah, right. Remember, so you... leg rubber. You haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he does do back, left and right or back, back rubbing as well? He does it all. Right, right. right. So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, whoa, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well and your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go. Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was stop this doing above that. a laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that on. Oh, the... okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got yeah, towels. Halfway through, pants, yeah, bras. Yeah, halfway through, he said, "You haven't got 20p over for the dryer." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm lying there and he lifts the leg up yeah. and I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, your, your outside of the body is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. <laughs> he does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body is yeah. longer than the inside. Of <laughs> so he, he, he had me lying on my front and what have you and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he was going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid, this as well. Mm -hmm. Putting me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice, though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I've quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that. I said, oh, you know, that, that's that. He went, oh, shut the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> he probably said that. He said, that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. And a lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional rubber? He's a, 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 a doctor. He's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you... got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. He said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. He said, because, you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I tell me about it. So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person He's a who's gullible enough to spend 46 quid for this oh, hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them, rather than them being in charge of the so brain. So all you did was you met a person as stupid as you? <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like... 15, no, he saw a right fucking sucker coming. No, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, don't, the reason... Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well, I am doing I've got locked into it. I've got to go at least another three times. Why? I'm to get out mean? of it. I don't know. I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait. Well, what's the wisdom he's going to come up with next week? That would be brilliant. I will kind of... Yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is... Your blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking... You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. Do you know, like, how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus, right? He said, mm. uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep... Uh... Close your eyes and see... <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just leaving but, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing, close your eyes, you're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? <laughs> okay. He said, and just think about nothing <laughs> else. I said, he's a witch. <laughs> didn't he? Did, did he even say you didn't put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes and, and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So I was lying there and it just wasn't working because... Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine! Because I was... You were, even though you were thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no, it, <laughs> He found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next day, someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> Stupid. He pulls that one out of the bag. Right. So, so what 
does that mean? Oh, God! You were still... Um, <laughs> you were still <laughs> <in> <laughs> what does that mean? I was straining him. I had him shut, but I was sort of looking yeah. down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining him and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm going to die! I am going to die! Why, out of interest though, and this is this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why, why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, developed? I, I, I honestly it's got to be trauma, hasn't it? It's the things, again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, where were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Uh um, You can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> That's amazing. Because oh, they, 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 they pinpoint they things. They all the tic-tacs they've ever yeah, eaten. Yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> oh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No. Because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> My mum and dad don't even remember so, me then. And, and it's oh, weird. I remember, and, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't no, remember no, that, no, were you? No, would you, you weren't there, were you? you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember well, having you, one no, of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to memory. go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, OK, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by, um <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking tic tacs? No, I we lost our truck for you. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But why? Why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they were glued? But why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, <laughs> I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It... <laughs> when they came in, and you could sense them looking. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> I went to what's her name, mm. Harley Street. I went for a, a checkup, mm. and uh, like a medical, mm. posh. You know Harley Street. It's like yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah. been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. I uh, went up to the counter. I said, uh, "I see the doctor." They said, "Name yet?" Yeah. It was ten minutes. Go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yep. Loads of magazines. I mean. Like a, like a news agent yep. in the middle of the room on a table, loads of them. So I'm looking through, and there's the you know there's the top quality ones. Your Esquire, you know GQ, Classy, Yacht Weekly, uh, all that, Country Life, uh, Boys, Boys. It's one there, yeah. Boys. What's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it, and it's like Boys with a Z. <laughs> Two fellas stood there. Looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Dungarees on. Uh, no shirt then. No shirt, just dungarees sort of unbuttoned, hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never going to buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're going to tell us you looked through a you guy's magazine. I had, I had a little, little look just because I thought, you know, like I say, you, it's one you're chance. You're always looking to learn, aren't you? You're always looking to learn. <laughs> yeah. Always open. You know, there might have been something in there that I go right. I get it now. I understand why why they like doing that or whatever. Yeah. All right. So uh, she said I was going to, you know, ten minute wait. I can, I can have a quick flick through. Mm. Picked it up, had a look. Um, still none the wiser. Why? Well, what did you see when you opened it up? Um, just loads of... Uh, I mean, like I've said to you before about I don't know why you like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there. You're not going to go... Oh, yeah, so sure, yeah. Nice. yeah. Some had, like, car oil on the face. <laughs> uh, not about. Yeah. There was someone sat on a, um, like a, a one of them square things of hay. Oh yeah, sat there, like sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah, uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, not about. 
Yeah, yeah, just looking, just looking like it's normal. That's crazy. Like that. No farmer walks around like that. What was the other one? There was a, uh, you know, motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. No, I'm going through and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It, it it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in. <laughs> Look in the male body. Look at, look at this bloke it's describing not... this huge throbbing thing. The bike's not bad either. Yeah, yeah all that. Yeah. Loads of them. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, just all, just, just cock. Just hundred percent. Like let's let's just talk about the knob. That's yeah. a good name for a, um, a guy magazine. Hundred percent cock. Hundred percent cock. Did it not at any moment sort of maybe slightly unnerve you that you might the doctor might come in and see you reading? Boys? No, because I or wasn't. What about if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital about to have um, a tube going down your knob and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on and I walked through and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went, yeah, Carl, what are you doing? I would have just said, look at this. Look at this, it's free. And, I, and, you, and I'd have said, why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like I brought it with me? Look yeah, yes, it does, because well, so I would at... never see... You would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then and pretended that it was that's, there. That's the thing. That's I was amazed by that. Because there was no, like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for, like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> it was really... I mean, really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're going to have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. You had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had, and I thought... They're really struggling with like ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. Sococo. Surely, surely Sudico is better. No, because it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's Dick as well. Subdico. Yeah. What, and it's, it was still a Sudoku style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name. Yeah, yeah. It's just so everything. Not, it was all just a... Sudoku, but called Sococo. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, but, if I if I was gay, do you know like let's you have say, a game of Lubo? <laughs> let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. <laughs> Knoberation. <laughs> let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> Well, that works for either sex. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how we spend our okay, Christmas. Then. Fuck a poo. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that um, I just I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Thoughts, Carl? Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. <laughs> yeah! That's that, could be case. that could be the case. Yeah, well, it is split into two, yeah, and they and they are, are responsible for different things. Yeah. It's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that up there. Yeah. In your head. Because you have, you have quite... Sort of out there, nebulous thoughts, and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that, uh, that other sense of like, this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. When you go, all right, let's go, <laughs> and you move from it, and you don't know what what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is where they go, go left. <laughs> and you do, and then you go, so, remember that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am, and yeah. I couldn't concentrate? <laughs> Think of that! Think of that! I called him! Oh my God, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I, I what, went in wandering. London, you got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went wandering, and then, uh, you know... It's when like... he first moved into his new place, he was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place, and he didn't know where he was. He tried to take a How can you ever shore. really get lost in London, though? I'm just... It's um, cabby. Well, oh. yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that, because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate <laughs> that, do they? But, um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you, uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said go, that's much better. Yeah, it the was a cold sand. day, it was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home, I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Uh, go on. 
Uh, well, a place what's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay, and specific. the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, okay. But that time I was in a rush and, and I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um, I'll, do one, I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, OK? In your head, OK? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house, cos it's a, it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't... I've, I've never been that lost, where I'm walking <laughs> across a field. At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle, I wouldn't go that far. I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> you did once. You were in the middle of a field and your dad had to rescue you. Yeah, and carry that's you when I was a kid, because I was reading as I was walking. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> and he never read again. <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. Reading. And okay, so so uh, so okay. So <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I know you're enjoying this book. Can I have a word with you? Just look, just look past the book a minute. There's just there's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when my other senses went. Hang on a minute. I'm being stung. <laughs> load of nettles and stuff. I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, where's Carl? I was there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> you should have booked. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like, we were in, uh, I think it was St. I St. Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah. It was in St. Ives. And, uh just, you know, it was a nice day and that. There was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Um, it, was all, it was haunted, no, actually. No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most... It's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat on my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kiff all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then, uh Sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs Battersby didn't exist, is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. It wasn't the landlady? No, there was no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My were you dad ill? Went were out you ill? Night. Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that. I just... So you were sitting up, but you were awake... And you were having a conversation with Mrs. Battersby. Mm. <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right, but so... at the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up. Chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening? Or you do remember it happening? No, I remember that, like, if I see my mum now and I mention St. Ives, she'll go, oh, yeah, Mrs. Battersby. She remembers coming in, cos she was older than me, wasn't she? So, to Who? her, my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was older because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, "Oh, it's Susan or whatever." Right, sure. You call Batter older people Batter by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, me up all night. You know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh, why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh. Your mum was older, though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing a picture of myself at this wedding. OK. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you? Uh, uh, about I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking <laughs> at a picture. Right, OK. <laughs> yeah. Right, OK. So Mrs Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at I all. I don't remember the chat now. Well, then so, why are you telling us? You must your remember memory. it, because you're telling us about it's it. It's not your Because it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once, and you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs but... Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the name, remember because her. your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go, hearsay, thrown out of court. Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I had a beetle. I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can believe... It remembers. It we remembers. can believe. It we can believe you ate a beetle, right, because that is something that could happen in real life. But 
what we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> what sort of beetle was it? Just one of them standard beetles, just a black shiny one. Thing is, right, a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, I call it an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl, and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classy restaurant, they're <laughs> serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah, I love the fact that it's this, exactly the same thing. But yeah. They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something... It's think, a good job you remember that anecdote, though, because he doesn't. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In years to come, we'll be going, it's some wasabi once. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did, yeah. I was in the <laughs> ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. Uh -huh. <laughs> So hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Batsby because what you other... confidently said, you confidently said uh, it, was it, was, it was haunted, it was the most haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life, But you supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know. When I was younger, I but didn't you think that was a ghost. But you remember the specifics of an oh, ant walking so you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then... It, 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 then when I mentioned it, your man was saying, what do you mean? Mrs. Battersby. Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit. But... So, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you're wow. the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Company, they had a company. Oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? Oh, it's a, it's a little... It's a Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. The whole calculator. Do that boobs thing again. Uh, my mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator <laughs> on the beach. My only friend was a calculator. Oh, God. Oh. Just so much shots of him in Vietnam. He's carrying Tommy. With his the batteries. With his the batteries. batteries. <laughs> it's on a funeral for him. <laughs> his batteries are all over the floor. <laughs> oh, fuck you now. The only company was a calculator. Before I used to knock around with a brick. We have to face facts here. Go on. The world is, is old. Hold on. All right, okay. The yeah, world is old. The world is old. That is a fact. Yeah, that fact. is a fact. It's the same as if you've got a gran mm. who's 70. Yeah. Um, there's not much you can do for her. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can say you're warm, mm. but at the end of the day, she's still going to be shit in her pants. <laughs> she's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm, right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old, and yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out. Uh, the earth, in metaphorically, is shitting its pants. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. No. No, we're not, no. And that's where we went wrong. And if we didn't interfere at that point, we might have been more suited to the conditions now. And in aura. Right. I'm cold. She doesn't want double glazing. Why not? Just because she's worried that when people come round and sort of knock on the door, she won't hear them. Because it's, <laughs> it's all sort of double glazed. But and... they're knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but she said, that, no, she didn't like a bell. It makes her jump too much. Well, what, how, how, do, how do they get in now? Well, it's the thin door, the thin glass you hear. It's not like soundproof, like double glazing is. What? So they, she, they have to knock. They on knock the... like that on the door, and she can hear that because but it's like a wooden door. Why are they going to double glaze the door? Is it a glass door? No, they want to put that PVC door in. in with Hang the on, so glass. she's scared by. You don't want a doorbell because that alarms her. But the knocking is fine. The knocking's fine because you, you get to know knocks. Why don't they have a bell that when you press it, it makes that noise? Because they haven't done that yet. Well, Maybe yeah, that's yeah, an you, idea. Could, you could do a sample of a like that. So when they press the doorbell, she hears. That's easy, that's done. You could sort that out for her. Well, I don't want to start getting dragged into it, because... Uh, Why don't you make Arnie Nora a bell that knocks? Well, he, he could be done. But the fact of the matter is, it isn't, and that's why she doesn't want double glazing. But why don't you tell her, say, Arnie Nora, have double glazing, be warm, be safe, hear the knock. Hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. Auntie Nora, 
Hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. She could fart until she's blue in the face. No one will be able to hear. But look. No one will be able to smell it. But this is it. Glazing. This is tremendous. it. This is it, though, isn't it? She wouldn't be around now if it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. Are you annoyed at that? You're annoyed. I know he's such a fascist, isn't he? Anti yeah. Laura, a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. Yeah. No, Eugenics but is where you'd, you'd be up here. I, I, but don't you see what I'm saying, though? The way the world... We've, we've changed more than the world has. We can't handle anything now, can we? Look at it, like I say, a bit of snow, a bit of cold, everything comes to a standstill. Yeah. Oh, I can't go out, it's dangerous, you'll slip over, people having time off work. Yeah. What would you do, right, if you run a business, right, your business could go under, right, it snows a bit, you've got ten employees, you're paying them well, and they go, I can't come in today, Carl, a bit icy. I'll do it, I'll do it, OK? Right, they're snowed in, right, you're running the business, what are you running? It's a, uh, let's not, don't, you know, I'm not going to big myself up, it's just a, no, it's a factory, it, uh, it's, it's make bells, bells, I make you, no, don't, don't U-Bends, they... U-Bends for... You know, Toilet, so yeah. you run a, OK, right, OK, so, plumbing, so plumbing. Plumbing. you pay them all right, don't you? I'd say most of them are on above average. So you're there. What time do you get in? Um, about quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, waiting for them to come in at nine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, it's snowing. It's a bit snow snowy. You got there. It took you a bit while. You'd set off early, did you? Or? Gave myself a bit more time because I had to put the heating on the car. Okay, ring, 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 ring. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Oh, oh, uh, is that is that Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is, yeah. Who's that? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's Sheila. Um, Listen. Sheila, shouldn't you be here by now? Yeah, no. Um, I was going to set off. Well, don't, but... we'll set off now. Stop wasting time. We've got a big order on. No, I know. We're all but... on a bonus here if we get this done. I'll see you in uh, ten minutes, shall I? I can't make it. What? I can't make it. Why not? The car won't start and it's slippy on the drive. I just can't get out. Get the transport. I'll see you in... I'll give you twenty minutes, all right? Don't no, worry about it. Well, Thanks for calling. I'll see you in a bit. I'm also scared of the ice. I'm scared of the ice. I'm going I'm, I'm not going uh, to... I'm not going to come in today. It's dangerous. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm just... I'm going to wait until the ice and snow goes away and then but I'm going to come in. But they're predicting it's going to be about two weeks before yeah, they clear all this. I can't really travel in this. It's oh, a bit dangerous. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay at home. I'll, uh, I'll replace you. Because I need someone to come in. Well, you're firing order. me because I can't get into work with this. This. Well, I, I got think... into work, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but oh, you don't live with me, do you? If you did live with me, then no, you'd probably it see. Bad. How... It was bad where I was as well. Yeah, oh, you, do you know how bad it is here? When you come round and have a look how bad I'm, it is here, no, you drive I'm my. Not tell you what, you come round and drive my fucking car because I'm snowed in. You fucking calling me a cunt? And I'll tell you, if you fire me, I'll take you to drive you, you bald headed wanker. Right, you're fired anyway for for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm. Right then, see ya. Right, and right. then she's she's done with. She's weak anyway. Ring, 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 ring. KP plumbing. Hi, uh, uh, is that uh, Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hi, it's Bobby. Oh, um, Bob. Yeah, um, bit of trouble. Um, uh, in my area, it's absolutely snowing. It's possible. No one's getting out. I live near Sheila. Bob, listen. Yeah, well, yeah. Sheila's just been on. She's saying she All can't right. get in either. She can't. I've just seen her out there trying to dig her car out, and she's her about. She's really, really tried hard to get to work, but she can't do it because she's she's not very rich, and her car doesn't work. She hasn't got the right tyres, and there's no public transport. They've cancelled those. Wrong snow on uh, this country. I'm not going to make it in today, son. So um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy. Well, no, you're saying you'll see me mm. tomorrow. Yeah. But but you'll probably call up tomorrow with the same thing. Well, only no, if it's snowing still. No, listen, it might not well, still. I, can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Yeah, it's not my fault, is it, really? So go round to Sheila's and, and like, slag me off if you want. But I'll tell you what, you're you not off, coming just... back here. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> one chance. Give them one chance. Oh. Well, you didn't even give them one chance. No, because they'd done it before. <laughs> Just annoys me. <sighs> what is art? Um, it's a very broad term. It's a very difficult one as well. Well, let me throw that question over to uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, we were just trying to uh, clarify what art is. Uh, it's just something for your eyes to look at. Right, it's, right. it's just a change from the norm, isn't it? Um, mm. I mean, that's why I think most people have it. But then... The problem is, I'd, I'd never buy a piece of art. I don't see the point in buying something, because I know that my eyes will get bored of it eventually. Right. Have you got much art in your house? Yes. Yeah. Because it gives me pleasure, and it don't, I don't get tired of it, I don't get bored of it. Do you look it. at it every day? Well, it's there, isn't it? It just adds pleasure Yeah, but other things are there. Dust it. is there, but... Surprisingly, I've not compared I think art I've, I've to looked, dust oh. as often as I perhaps should. <laughs> but... 
um, the thing about, uh, and this I think may be intriguing to you, uh, Damien Hirst, of course, is more of a conceptual artist like Tracy Emin, and a lot of what contemporary art does is followed on from a guy called Marcel Duchamp, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Mm. Now, he famously, he famously took a gentleman's white urinal like you'd find in a pub toilet, and he put it on its side, and he signed it with a fake name, and he put it in an art gallery. Now, he did that in about 1917, perhaps a bit later. It, I, it just annoys me, because there'll be snobby people who haven't got a clue, and they're looking at that and they go, oh, yeah, I see what he's trying to say. Well, that might make them think they might... Damien Hirst, I don't, I, I don't feel angry with Damien Hirst, really, because right. he's getting away with it. But why does that annoy you? Because it's people falling into the trap. Damien Hirst, before he dies, I bet he goes, what a laugh that was. I had everyone on. There's a very good point as well, because some people think that the greatest art form of uh, the last hundred years is marketing. Yeah. Some people say that that is his art, that it's not good enough to do it, you've got to then get away with it. And if art, if the point of art is to inflame, I don't think anything inflames people more than the discussion about whether something's art or if someone's taking the piss or if someone gets 50 million for something, do they deserve it? Is it worth a hospital? Well, what do you think? What do you think of the shark in a tank? I, I, I think I was blown away by it. I, I thought, thought I'd never seen anything like yeah. it before. It was sort of spectacular because it is so huge and so vast. And to have put a shark, you know, in formaldehyde and to have hung it in an art gallery, it's very striking when you see it. Yeah, it's it a is. remarkable achievement. We, 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 what we is he? Is he an artist or a fishmonger? <laughs> <laughs> they, what he's done, anyone could have done what he did. Yes, but not everyone did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting point that you raise. It's the same old point you always oh. raise. Not anyone could have done it. That's always the same point you make. Anyone could have done but, it. Carl, but they didn't you do could, it. You could say the same about Michelangelo. Is he an artist or a painter and decorator? Well, it hasn't caught on, has it? Like the crying boy photograph. No one's having them in their house. No one's gone, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen the new trend, a shark in a tank? I'm... No one's got the room, no one wants it. And that, to me, shows you what's popular. At the end of the day, if everyone wants one, he's got to be good, hasn't it? But I think if people were given a chance to appreciate more sophisticated things, then, then, then they would. And I just think that that's, I think that's true in all walks of life. You, you know, it's, it's an acquired taste. And the best things are an acquired taste. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, I mean, it's tiny, you've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so there's no nowhere there. There's no, no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's, where's, the, where's the sofa? At home? Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night? Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting? Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. It does. The picture changes. No, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable every fucking day. No, no, honestly, it's it's good to because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything, so I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself. No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up, and if Suzanne's sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? So, why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you, don't, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward, I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Look no, back she, at you we're used to it. That's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room in a way. <laughs> like... And they're further away! There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use... It doesn't matter. Your Sorry, eyes, remember why your eyes wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, remember, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. Stephen <laughs> Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> so I can look forward, she's sat next to me. If, if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now, she's getting the sound from me still because she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away, but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> so that's how you've managed to you keep are, this relationship alive. You are, Maybe. This, you're such an odd little man. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on, on the estate who, who did use... Uh, have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. 
I'm going to tell you ages ago, it's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three-wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's, push bike? Pedal bike? Yeah, like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> and cycle about, like, Yeah. She was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway. Oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always go in quick save and nick biscuits. And if anyone went up to her to say, stop nicking the biscuits, she'd pull out, like, a little mirror out of a bag and she'd look in it but talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> God! Oh, man! What, what, what? This so she was insane? Up. It's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like it Narnia. used to scare me. It's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's really, really So, weird. hang on. So, she used to talk to people through the mirror, cos she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No. That's weird. No, that would be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. Oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, yeah, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are gives sort you of... confidence? Well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more, and you pick up what habits you do, and stuff like that. So, what have you changed through your... Viewing uh, of yourself. I, I, I sort of grew grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh. Sculptures. What do you think of sculptures? I mean, because that's something that really is getting into the, the 3D world there, isn't it? No longer do you have to represent something as 3D. You can make something. You know, is it, you know, the statues are, are amazing, aren't they? They're clever, aren't they? I mean, um, they always look the same. Well, that's not true, is it? Because recently there was a, a quite a controversial one, a huge one in London, uh, the pregnant uh, thalidomide woman. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thoughts? I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wouldn't be room, cos it would just be you, Suzanne, and a pregnant thalidomide watching telly. I, I, I don't know what he was trying to say. It's, uh... Maybe she was saying, OK, we've had the human form. This is an example of the human form. Yeah, but do you think she started off trying to do normal and it was like, oh, chipped a bit off? <laughs> She, one of the arms got chipped off. Well, it, off. it makes you wonder, doesn't it? And why, you see that, that square, Trafalgar Square, oh. you, you've got that. Nelson's column, he's got one arm and a leg missing or something and a patch over his eye. Then you've got the thalidomide. Why can't they just do a full person? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That, that was what they saw. That was what the artist saw. It's, like, it's about confronting us with certain preconceptions of what that... what we expect of the human form, what we expect of sculpture. And it's probably a little ironic comment as well on the famous Rodin. It's wrapped up with all kinds of ideas of maternity, of the human form, of what sculpture is. Why wouldn't you put that in a big public place? But what about the subject? Did you think, who's that subject? Who is that woman? No, not really, because the Lidomides are around and we, we've, we've all seen one. It's not like a shocking... a shocking image. It's one of life's little things that it chucks out. There's some out there. So Amazing. it's, not, it's not shocking, is it? I don't understand what you mean. I think what I thought is, it just goes to show we're sort of running out of, of ideas. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it or they try and destroy it? Uh, Do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> Angel in the North, that's a bit of art, but it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You're driving along a miserable motorway. Yeah. Oh, what's that over there? It gives you something for your eyes to look at again. Motorways are, are the most boring place to drive. Mm. But you go, oh, look, there's a, there's a bit of art over there. Yeah, but, Stick that but then again, should the you be looking at art when, you, when you're when you going at 70 miles an hour along a motorway? Well, yeah, because it's really big. You can keep your eye on it and... and look in know, the mirror. You can. You, it's not a problem. 
wait till you go past it and look in the mirror like normal. What's so you like the Angel of the North? Because it's, it's, it's something in the middle of nothing. Right, but if you put it somewhere else... Stick it in Trafalgar Square, you'd go, oh, more clutter. <laughs> I remember we, uh, we were shown uh, the cartoon version of Animal Farm when we were about, like, 15, 16. We were discussing it afterwards about, oh, yeah, the podium. oh, yeah, great, oh, yeah, communism versus, oh, the poor proletariat and all this. And this bloke went, you lot make me sick. It was just a nice film about some animals. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What, what's your take on that, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on, what's your point? Because you can see the irony there, can't you? I haven't, I haven't seen it. No. Uh, if you but want you... to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I disagree with there because um, I think um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could... And I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Schindler's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving, couldn't you? Schindler's List in space! <laughs> Miss Piggy's Choice. Well, we talked about that. What? About things like that in in art as well. Do you think that, that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, like like films do, things like the Holocaust and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, lives and dies. Why did she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did she pick? I, th I don't. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this you... is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is... this is like deal, no deal. It's kind of you down to the last, <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you going to go for? Oh God! <laughs> but why did you ask which one did she choose? Because <laughs> even if he'd said the names Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it? No, because that you've then said... I'd ask more. I'd ask more then. If if you said Alison, I'd go. What, what was it with Alison? That what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do. You question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, "What was going on there?" Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ. That's because you've just watched a Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. <laughs> I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah, brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> What an extraordinary on, point. Go on, there's gonna, this is gonna be, he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something up. here, he's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then, what's your no, take on films? Films, films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. And, uh... You like one with a good story? I like, I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm -hmm. Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> Mission, Impossible Mission Impossible 2. 2. <laughs> These are your, these are the what you consider the great works no, I'm of film. I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen yet. You always say, "Oh, have you seen so and so?" You well, Mission it. Impossible One. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you. Three's out. <laughs> That's true. One of the most striking art exhibitions that I ever attended, Carl, was an exhibition of outsider art. I'm something I'm sure you're very familiar with. Outsider art, of course, is work that is made by people who are often institutionalised for mental health problems, um, or they are just incredibly, you know, uh, the people who aren't in any way part of the art establishment. Well, they are right up to psychopathic murderers. Uh, clinically insane mass murderers would count as outsider art. Um, I, I went to an outsider art exhibition in New York. Um, it was incredible. And I bought a, a, a painting of this guy. He's a, a, a chronic schizophrenic. And he paints in tar, like road tar, mm. that he gets from roads. And he paints in that on wood he finds in sort of skips. And it's incredible, because it's sort of like scratched in. And uh, it, it's amazing. And there's this thing of Jesus being helped down off the cross. Um, Admittedly, I was walking around there going, this is fucking mental, and James was going, you've got to stop saying that. Because, of course, some of the people are mental. <laughs> and there was one bloke doing the sculpture of a skull, right? <laughs> and underneath... <laughs> it was like a little head with his teeth. Underneath, he put a sign that said, real teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get the real teeth from? <laughs> what I think is interesting about that is how much therapy it provides for these 
often mentally unstable people, which is another important value of art, of course, people's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> you whistle. Oh. Yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? It's right. freedom. Expand on this point, if you would. Well, that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. That's mm. great, that. For art is freedom. I yeah. love that, because I think, I think you've really hit on something there. Would you, would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, I know what you meant. Well, I know what you, you meant there. Would you I include mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to, I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, what, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So Not just a take us off. through a typical See, uh, day. When would the whistling begin? So, so uh, this was that you spent you spent <clears throat> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking. I'm in my own place now. I'm going to annoy them. Well, it was mainly it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble, mm. and they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> Um, it sort of got boiler problems it. down in well. wor It works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like, I, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going mm. from one thing to another. A wedley? And a, a man was impressed, she was like, oh, you can whistle, can't you? She's going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you get? I was just doing all different levels. So it, this sounds like a scene from One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. The boy is setting off the radio. I can whistle. Oh, you're good whistling, aren't you? Oh, yeah, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home it when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd, because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you mm. never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up. You, whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a well, whistle. Well, the people who aren't whistling are, are usually pissed off. But yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least, he, he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling. Whistling, there's, the, the, there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's I, not. I don't know. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as, like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh. Retired. <laughs> <laughs> what, because he couldn't whistle? That was it. It was like, well, yeah, he whistles whistle. all the time. Can't whistle, well, yeah. can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth? Yeah, I suppose he could have done. He didn't think of that. What about a flute? Or a recorder. Not London's burning again. Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off. <laughs> he didn't really think this through, did he? He retired at the age of 28. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family were bankrupt. <laughs> With no teeth. Yeah. And just a why bucket you, and a squeegee. Why aren't you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if, the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No. I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. What, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? Oh, two hours. Two Fuck hours? Put my word down. And then... this, sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it, can we hear it? So you were, whistling, is... you were whistling after you had your go as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. That is Carl's... Self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit to have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, because I do all right. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can come oh, up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that are, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree, cat. Go on. Squirm. 
That's using a Q. It's worth ten, that. It's not bad, is it? Now, I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you... I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out? And then, yeah, when it wasn't my go, just... <laughs> Anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby, maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here. But I think there's a difference between Beethoven and... <laughs> squirm. <laughs> there's a cue in that. <laughs> Robert Nozick did this thing that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible, you did exactly what you've always wanted. You became the person you wanted to be, you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference. So it was your life, OK? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying? So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. It, am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary, but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank Right, uh, and your one proviso was, are munches as good? <laughs> yeah, No, absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic, You've got yeah. to pre-program your life, that's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just, if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah, when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them. You are the... You're the... It's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're a living it. That. A bit dangerous. Sorry? A bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, why? Just, um, I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in, because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting... Better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day. You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't. You're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't. Know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life, and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. Well, you just have munches every day, and well, yeah, you're getting it then. You'd get in it. If you if you don't know you've got in this tank. If I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. Right. Well, you're meant to be at work. She goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Go, All right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that. Well, I'm a bit suspicious, of... though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like. But I like the fact now you're even questioning it and you're not in the tank, and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that, because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example... You wake up, there's the munch, it's a sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Oh, she goes to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought of that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, got some munches for oh, breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, OK. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't, you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet. I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane 
worst scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. OK, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? OK. Because you don't, you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it, because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. OK. So Anticipation. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it, and looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? OK, well, right. can I ask a question? Because, sorry, I'm just... Uh, what I'm fascinated to know is, if you decided to sign up to the... The float tank idea, OK? You can design your perfect life. But I prefer not to well, know I'm doing it. No, you, you don't won't, you know. Won't, but I you want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, OK? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munchies. What else? We've got, got munchies, munchies and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, I, I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, I just think you need, you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes." The, the, oh my God! The boiler so is fixed. Like so no, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no, no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but it you gets don't, fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler. You could be the perfect temperature. But this all the isn't time. Earth anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But in you your won't life. realize. It won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got no, a problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he means got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I've fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just ask no, one No, let him let speak. Let for... me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for... You, no, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole... Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yes. tube into the problem gene. OK, so it's down the problem, can't do it. OK, go on, right. So it's better to have... You've got a problem hole in your head, right? Yeah. So you stuff in a problem problems. into a problem hole. OK, in yeah, OK. Now, all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. <laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but good that's not true, is it? The problem <laughs> hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky, let uh, him explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say his problems... Uh, not even problems. Well, how big is his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> Right, but why, Shut why, up! Let but, him speak. But, but he's but just got, expanding on his idea. Why do you keep his problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little skittles? Loads of problems. You you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly, or someone breathing <laughs> loudly, or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. <laughs> it is. And that's why the problem. Ball is growing. <laughs> it's a ball. He's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's, ball. No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me <laughs> ask. I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem <laughs> hole, <laughs> down the problem tube, into and the bounce, problem bounce gene. Into the problem gene. Into, right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just... Can ladies have a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls, is my question to you. But, and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's. Or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you could right. have you could you, have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying it, you, okay. Listen, okay so suppose I came to you and said, "Listen, well, um, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country might yeah. have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it.'" And I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole. And, he, and, and, and hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first, is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right, he'd say, right, take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right? he... I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish, he would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball, would. wouldn't he? Well, problem... well, he'd, well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger into the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. OK, so... So, Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you
what do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it. It's after. It's like that holiday. When I what was on holiday. What do you mean holiday. you don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it? It's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like you, the holiday. I've just so been you enjoyed away. coming on, off on. holiday. What? No, I want to hear it. You, you enjoyed the holiday. You didn't enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there. I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is the stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now, you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant... Yeah. ..I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much they give you, because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now, I have the lamb chops, it comes with extra veg. I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed... You can only so get packed so much... Enjoy if you're enjoying all, all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you... but you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and then it's, it's yeah, ruined. But what's, I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had, a, a, like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought, I fancy a couple of them. Yeah, and, and then... It, you... And the chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant now. Yeah, but you haven't missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's what's not like problem? you didn't... I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, the, th the problem was, Go I on. was enjoying it, but I thought, this is this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day, night, when I knew that it's gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So I go, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> But then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night because you'd live through it and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely problem... spiciness and the sausiness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you... Go on. Auntie Nora, I've told you she prepares all the food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, now... She, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks, I've got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Dunno. Just want the same. She was expecting too much, and that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. he's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you know. never Someone says, one. well, it depends. So do you have anything twice, ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl, right. because no... aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or are all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that that not only the... what, it's that's, actually on Monday, yeah. what are you going to do on Thursday as well? That... I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> the food diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to go, right, oh, fucking hell. Well, what else you say But then he's people. phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls that week. Well, it's just Just read her journal. Now, the question is, is it better to enjoy something once and not again than not at all. But you're an what idiot because you you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing. I did the boxing. I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm, that yeah. is it. I think that's what but, it is. But, but that's what I'm saying, though. I soon get bored. And that's it's like how you enjoy... You know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than... Well, that doesn't make sense. That goes totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's so your favourite. No, so, hold on. One. So, if you do have one munchie... Right, I'll go, yeah, there's a munchie, mate. You no. go, I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, 
But what is... Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one, and I'm, I'm going to get a taste for them, and I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? I'll keep want... them, then. Forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I prefer. I prefer to go. Do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you enjoy <laughs> okay, the last? Okay, why wait. do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry, but not the second. But you know, curry. it's the last one because it's no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going. That's for Monday. That's for Tuesday. That's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about twelve in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really fast. <laughs> you shove the first four in without right. even thinking about what right. I'm eating. Yeah. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, last what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. It? Yeah. So, hold on, though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly, then? Not as often as you think. You well, I don't know. <laughs> well, not as often as I think, I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after a sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies. And the same experience. You, you like the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. But also, right, we were playing football. So come and play football, right? And so we were playing. Was that football. just in the office, or yeah, just in the oh, office yeah. before you came, right? And then um, we were sort of kicking it back and forth, and I started kicking it a bit hard. And uh, but he was quite good. I, I said, I said, this is great, right? And uh, we finished anyway because we thought we'd break some up. And um, I went, I bet you were quite good at football, weren't you? And I actually thought, I thought he looked like quite a natural, you know, I thought he'd be good, he's from the north, and I thought he'd, that's all he'd have. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Right. And he went, I said, uh, I suppose you were quite good at football, and he turned the quickest flash, I went, I've scored once. <laughs> right? He said, and that's because I was being chased by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> And I went, oh. save it. Yeah. He went, no, I said, please, please save it, because I want to see that. No, you can continue now. Please tell us the rest of the story. You've scored a goal once well, because saw... you've been chased by a bee. Yeah, you've done it now, really. I was on the, uh... There I must be more the... to that story, <laughs> came in. I was in the school team. I wasn't that good as a kid at football, to right. be honest. Um, <laughs> mainly down to, I think it's because my dad, my dad wasn't into football. Right. And I think that's the way it works, isn't it? If your dad's into it, mm. then you could be a footballer when you're older. Sure. Yeah. Because you're into it. And, um... So I was in the school team because I got on with the other lads. Uh -huh. They let, let me in the team. Popular guy, yeah. Sure. And um, yeah, I was stood there doing nothing because I didn't really know what to do. I didn't. I never knew which way I was meant to be shooting. Yep. Yeah. I uh, got all that messed up. Yeah. That is and a I just stood there, right, and uh, with my hands behind my back, <laughs> and uh, something landed on me on like this part of my thumb. You got. You can't just point. It's radio. It's this bit here. Right. Yeah. Um, the the fleshy bit. The fleshy yeah. bit of the thumb. 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 Yeah. And I thought, oh, what's that? <laughs> and I looked down and there's a, bee. Thumb. Oh, it was a, a bee, bee. Yeah. It was a bee on me. So I start running, yeah. try to get away from it. And bees, actually something interesting about bees, more chance of getting stung by a bee in windy weather than any other sort of weather. That's incredible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'm running away. <laughs> and he said there was no more. Extraordinary. I've already learned so many, many things. <laughs> You're being chased by the bees. So windy. I'm running. It's on your thumb. Is it still on your thumb now? It's sort of gripping onto me like a stag Clever. beetle. Clever. <laughs> I love his it. Oh, or a bee. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm running, and I, I, I'm running towards, like, the goal. Yeah. Oh, God. And the ball comes to me. Yes. Wallop, get it in. Brilliant. What happened to the bee there? Did it sting you? They die, don't they? <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it died, sure, but did at that particular moment, <laughs> oh, did it sting you? This was probably about 20 years ago, so I imagine... No, no, no. Once a bee stings so you, So did it sting you? Yeah, but did it sting you? Though. Yeah. <laughs> right, that was the question. When did it sting you? When I was playing football. No! <laughs> Uh, Carl, do you want me asking? You say you're on the school football team. Was there just eleven boys at your school? Listen, listen, Carl. Oh, what I mean is, at what point in this story did the bee sting you? Uh, straight away? After or? half time. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record. I haven't really had time to check it out this week. No, been, you're joking. Been busy. Ooh, been I hope busy. it's not stupid. Um, goes back to 1908, and the person saying it's. You know, it's a good story in that, and I'll be surprised they haven't picked up on it yet, right? <laughs> uh, the Olympics, right, mm. um, in 1908 in mm. London, mm. apparently it was meant to happen in, in Italy, but it was cancelled. Don't know why, right? And it happened in London. Mm. Anyway, 400 metres, right, it was meant to... Uh, <laughs> there was a fella who was, who was going to do the run, right, and the favourite to win it was this Bulgarian guy. Right, it right. was like a new Okay, uh, there's, there's a few things it cannot be. One, 
he injures himself so a monkey steps in and wins. Uh, two, he does a drugs test, it turns out that he is a monkey. <laughs> um, so if it's either of those, right, I'm gonna go mad. So anyway, so the fella, right, this, this favourite, everyone's putting the money on him, thinking, yeah, he's gonna do it. Gonna is he hairy? Nice little, is this bloke it? hairy? So anyway, so the race happens. Yeah. And everybody's lined up, ready to run. And you know, everyone's saying, yeah, he's gonna win, he's gonna win. Then suddenly, a bit of murmuring going on, people going, oh, what's going on here? Mm, right. he's eating a banana. <laughs> and what there's a fella, just... there's a fella in the lane next to him. Yeah. Right, he's going up. Who's that? He doesn't look familiar. Oh, Christ, Carl. Kiko. Right, doesn't look familiar. Who's he? Yeah. You know, weird. Been, what's weird, going on? It? What's going on? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, what is it? What is it? Or who is it? I mean, I'm not, what is it? So they go in. <laughs> So they say, well, he might not be that any good, do you know what I mean? He might not be good, he might. It's just a bit short, isn't he? Doesn't matter. He's only three foot six and he's hunched over on his knuckles, so... I didn't uh, realise it was fancy dress. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't think he's gonna be any good. <laughs> so, so the race starts. Oh, he's putting his finger up his arse. That's weird for runners to do that before a race. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Race starts. Yeah. The fella that no one recognises wins it. People go, what, what, what's gone on here? Yeah, sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We yeah. had our money on the favourite, what's gone on? Who yeah. is this guy? Yeah. Anyway, he stood up there, right? He's, he's looking well happy. Yeah. He's lifting the trophy and everything. <laughs> right. right. Long arms, long arms, that trophy's higher than... <laughs> so anyway... God. He's so... only three foot, but the trophy's nine foot in the air with those long arms. <laughs> so, so I'm they, suspicious, go on. They had the, they had the picture in the paper the next day. <laughs> sure. And everyone's going, yeah, he's, he was fast and everything, but... Quite hairy for a run. Oh, for f I'll tell you come what, on, no. come quite, on. quite hairy for a run because normally they shave themselves, don't they, to s make them faster. And no. They're going, how did he manage it? It's really hairy and that. So anyway, he wins the stuff. He walks away with a cup. The people who are in charge of the running, or like the uh, the Oli Olympic committee, look further into it. Turns out it was a chimp. Right, keep talking. Right. No, don't keep talking. Shut Why up. Shut up. This is monkey news. If you can't handle the news... It's news from 1909 and I haven't heard about a chimp winning the Olympics. <laughs> right, be quiet. What happened there then? 400 metres, right? Now Don't the thing is, talk shit. The Please, thing was, Ricky. it took so long for the Olympic Committee, right, to find out that it was a monkey. It was going man- it was like going, like, manic. It went into loads of races, it was picking up loads of, like... No, oh, shut up! Right? It became a celebrity, it was doing, <laughs> it was doing endorsements on TV. Don't talk shit! Uh, it said, uh, he managed to win the right. same race four years later in Athens, because... How did he get to Athens? But it's, it's a joke! They're winding you up, Carl! Weird. It's not weird! weird it's in- it? right. I do not believe it. Oh dear, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's clearly because this is the problem, is because you, yeah, what do you I watch? I mean, have you watched anything that's been worth having? The I only mean, thing I've watched really worth watching. 24. Well, on, yeah, on 24 big... works great. But oh. also films, obviously, that's the main reason mm. I bought it, because films just look amazing on the Yeah, DVD on, on yeah. the plasma yeah. screen. So if you're into films and that, yeah. it's just that I only, you know, I've just got the, got the five channels and flicking about. And I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand how more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause, well, not this one, but go on. Well. Uh, when was it? When was, uh, the last time I sort of sat down and had time, because I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um... Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did... When did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, and I'm not having a go. I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right? So Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ. I sat there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Go I'm on, just, just, just get on with it, get on, on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh, right. little fellas in a, in a wheelchair, having a, having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But, for me, I mean, you know, great, they're doing a the sport and everything. Don't put it on the telly. <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't, it wasn't, like, a rally going on. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally, Christ. like, with the, with the, with your, well, not to Enman, but with some of the other, <laughs> with, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? It's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! I don't know what to do! What, 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 and people, people would like, sat there watching it as well, when they've got other games going on in there. That's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money to oh, get God. in, yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they do you know what I mean? But it would have been... I and they know, all I, start first in the marathon. I just thought it would have, you know, give them a game of swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. God! There's never anything XFM on. in the community. <laughs> Did Brilliant. anyone confirm, actually, I had an email earlier, um... Swing ball! <laughs> no, I'm not having a go, though. Tell them. 
This is what I'm like, aren't I? You're, uh, sorry, this is recording you as well. What do you mean I'm not having to go tell them? Do you, what, you no, think you just said that to me? That you, do you think you haven't got a microphone? You just said to London, keep wheelchair sport off the telly because they can't get a rally going. You call them little fellas in wheelchairs. What? And I meant to go, what Carl meant was... What? I mean, what? <laughs> they can hear you as well. Yeah, I know. It's just that they might think that I'm, I'm having a go and I don't want them to. That's why I stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week because some people got the wrong end of the stick. Football team. A monkey football team? Yeah, in, mm -hmm. uh, Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Uh, got all the, uh, got all the team members here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> all the different things. Um, little goalkeeper. Apparently he's on transfers from some other club. But the bit that got me attention is, apparently he's a holder of PhD of physics. <laughs> Do you want to have a look at that? Oh, the goalkeeper? Yeah, just the goalkeeper. The, the others haven't done that much. <laughs> the others haven't done that much? Well, I believe that he's got better exam results than you, Carl, but I don't believe he's got a PhD in physics. Good Obviously... Guy. Do you know what the name of the team is? Kermit. <laughs> <Cut What? nuts. laughs> uh, Carl, would you sit on a bed, right, with Stephen in a hotel room, right, watching football, Okay, you're pouring, you're pouring each other wine and beer and champagne. Well, no, there wasn't that music playing. There was the roar of the crowd and John Motson doing commentary. It wasn't <laughs> a, it's not a sexy sound at all. <laughs> what do you think, Carl? Um, someone said, "Oh, come to my room. We're watching football." You got there, and he went. Well, who was on the bed that's first? That's not what happened. Who was on the bed first? Well, he probably got up to answer the door. So he, so, uh, I don't know, I came in, I thought, well, there's only a bed here, we sat down, we thought, yeah. No, but it wasn't, it was a chair there. So. Well, yeah, but you know full well that if you're in a room with Ricky, he's the one who's going to leap straight on the bed and demand that you... I'll just take the chair. Well, why would you be concerned with lying on a bed next yeah. to me? what's up with that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Why, why is it weird? I don't understand this. Because... I've changed my tune. <laughs> it's a bit weird lying on a bed. With a mate, just watching football. Yeah, you don't do that when you go around the house, do you? Yeah, you but it's because you have a sofa and things. We didn't have that in the Yeah, room. but when you visit someone in hospital, you don't say, move over. You pop, you don't pop yourself down yeah. next to him, you sit on the chair next no, to him. No, because it. you're not there in a relaxed situation for 90 minutes enjoying a game of sport. It's a, it's a more formal environment. Because mm. you're quite a sport fan, aren't you, Carl? Yeah, but not in, um... <clears throat> I don't like getting into things too much because mm. it can well, only be disappointing. True. I've never seen him get into anything. No. To be quite honest, no, I am a football fan, but I've got in, I've got, I've got it now to a point where if they lose, it only bothers me for about half an hour. Yeah, and then I move on because mm. the thing is, I'm not in control of it. There's nothing I can do to alter that no. that team. If I could go in and say, "Listen, you're lazy. You get your finger out. You move up front a bit." It's different, but it's totally. It's like getting annoyed with nature. There's nothing you can do. Mm. So let it happen. Watch it if you want, but don't get annoyed about it because it's totally out of your hands. Interesting yeah. that Carl's team tactics also sounds like he could be directing a gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> you get your finger out. You get up front. <laughs> You're lazy. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. What do you think of these people, though? I love it that everyone's a, an expert. Everyone's a pundit. You see these fat people in pubs going, well, he's lost a few yards up front. Yeah, you'd be a bit crazy. Mm. You fucking score a goal then, fatty. Mm. Wearing a football top. Yeah. I hate that. Exactly, yeah. They shouldn't make them for them. Shouldn't make them in that size. <laughs> it should be one size only. If you're fit enough to play football, you can wear one. If you're yeah. a fatty, you're not. <laughs> It looks ridiculous anyway. But what's that? That's what he you was talking doing? about. So you were a big fat slob with his belly out in an England shirt going, I could score from there. Go on then, let's have a go. Mm. Hey, listen, calm down. Don't be slagging off the fans because that's what it's all about. All, football's all about the supporters, isn't it? You know, mm. let's not forget these people paid millions to entertain us. If we want to drink till we're fat and eat pork pies and then put on an England shirt, we'll do it. But that is the it British way, that is the English way, that is what we won a war for. What difference does it make if we win or lose? That's what I always look at, the end result. How can you say you like football and then give us that argument? The well, only reason to watch football is, is the excitement of the challenge. Yeah, it's entertainment. No, it is and entertainment. a bit of skill. It's nice to see a bit of skill. And well, that, that yeah, only because it's entertaining. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, enjoy the game for what it is, and then forget about it. If Fat Bob in the pub... Mm. He's got his football top on. Mm, just. He gets all annoyed mm. when England, you know, lose. Yeah. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if they lose there or lose in the final? 
Well, I'll What's the point? Well, I'll tell you what, is it, mate. I knew a fat Bob, okay? That wasn't his name, but I'm changing the name to protect the innocent. And him. And he's not innocent, right? Was it Fat Dave? It was a big fat bloke, right? And he worked on one of the crews, um, that used to bring in equipment where I used to work at the Students' Union, okay? And, uh, he was, he was massive, right? And, uh, I think it was 19... 90 or 1992, the Euro, right, when England got knocked out and he went mental and he was so angry, he went out and he wanted retribution, okay, luckily there were no German people around, but the closest he, he could find was a sausage van, some poor <laughs> bloke who delivered sausages and he turned it over, he got the van and he turned it over because it was selling sausages so he thought that's German enough. No, well, if he's fat, he's probably just annoyed that it wasn't open. <laughs> For you, this is from uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer, Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right? I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because mm. I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right? Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right? So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad. Yeah. Put up with it. That's sure. Right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined a uh, joined a dancing thing just near um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> went it? along. I wanted to learn some moves. And How like, old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was like pretty big, so about eighty, eighty three, eighty four, eighty five, oh, something yeah. like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it. Um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. So in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm... told me before, you you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while. You had two fight in the boxing, you didn't even get in the pl That's not an you... yeah, Imagine well... if that was a film! This is not a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> Oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he won, 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 won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Footloose. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up. They banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. Um, <laughs> yeah. do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go kart and kept myself busy with that. So. <laughs> There's always, there's always all those just things. think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, he just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh. that. So, so that's that solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice so there is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not, if she's not ugly. minging, yeah. she's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing. Get a go kart. Cheers. <laughs> um, coming up, Steve. I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane. It was a golfing day. And I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. But it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Right, let me just get this. My, I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a, golfing a day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I noticed. Well, she doesn't play, no, she knew, no, it was a right. present, they were playing golf. It was, it was a sure. golfing day, she doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, it's all right, it wasn't a romantic meal. <laughs> no, no, but that was, what, that was <laughs> my immediate thought. I was... <laughs> yeah, 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 me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. Yeah. It, it would... just sounds like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> <laughs> but right. you don't play golf, Jane. I know, I know, go. <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so, <clears throat> I chose Carl, obviously. Um, 
uh, we went, well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Oh, uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <we'll blow> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Well, we, uh, he bought, he, we, he bought the shoes, especially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes, we had to change them, he was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over £22 on his, <laughs> these golf shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just, it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me and you were a bit scared. Yeah. What? what I nearly killed us once. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, go, stop! And he'd put his foot down the brake, and then went like reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams, <laughs> watch the tree, right? He was, he was, yeah. So, oh, tubes of hazard. <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, sure. anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because it's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, he takes off that, and I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like right angles, straight into these uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around. He goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing because it's like impolite to laugh. But he he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then second shot, I go, you know, you're off for three now. If you take another shot, he went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. <laughs> he hits the ground before it and misses the ball off the <laughs> And I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like terrible. Tortoise. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or something. Sure. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, and you and I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We, I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. You hate so, lateness. Yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. There was no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly asleep. he fell asleep <laughs> and he was late. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean, though, Steve? If you're sort of, like, nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I'd been stressed out for <laughs> four and a half hours, right? Uh, right. And my life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm going to have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason, it didn't come on, but I thought, it's all right. I'll just, uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the It's dark. summer, so it's light right. anyway. Well, so there's yeah. no windows in the bathroom, so, uh, yeah. So you're in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, asking me. So I said, "Well, I won't. I, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because, you know, I haven't got like long hair. I've got a dryer, and sure. I can sort of one wipe." <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's uh, already ten minutes late though when I called. Well, of course. ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is lateness. Next well, it doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had like another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up. Hurry up, hurry up. So I said, "Yeah, all right." So I get out. And dry and like me tackle and what have you. <laughs> Calls back again thirty seconds later. Do you stop know. No, I don't. No? You know, I don't, you don't like that. Do that no. Give it a wipe. Thirty seconds later. Come on. So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area. Naked. With a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Meant to be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> right now, uh, it was back in the nineteen eighties. Right. So it is quite topical then. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. When did this happen then? Nineteen eighties. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a. Uh, Colombian F1 sort of, form, you know, Formula One driver. Yeah. Uh, apparently these races were going on, right, and uh, someone kept winning them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, okay, forget it, forget it. No, don't do it. It's because it's rubbish. Because it's rubbish. Right, so someone kept winning the races. So uh, uh, this this um this someone this this human um that kept winning the races. So this human being that kept winning the races, um, Carl, what was his name? Um, his name is it? It's Jimmy something. Yeah. How tall is he? Well, is something interesting? No, 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 no,
Right. Was never showing, sh never showing his body that's or right, face. That's right. That's right. Never you're took joking. his helmet off. <laughs> you are a, you're an idiot. No, I took his helmet off, right? You know, you know the short trousers he used to wear. <laughs> the, you know, his, you know his trousers were about a foot long, but his shirt, the, the sleeves were really long. Anyway, right? So because he wouldn't take his helmet off, you're he an idiot. It was in, he was taking part in like yeah. the F three, which is like the lower ranks yeah. of Formula One. And <laughs> just like, get to it. Just get to. Everyone to thought it was like a, a famous driver yeah. who was just taking part get, in that. Get to being a monkey. Anyway, what happened was uh, there was a crash one day. Yeah. And the car tipped over. Everyone's like, oh. He ran up a tree. <laughs> So, they suspected when he ran away with the ambulance people up a tree and started eating a banana? So the marshals ran over and the ambulance people were there and they yeah. were about to take his helmet off and the marshal was like, don't take his helmet off. Yeah. Give away the secret that he's a Give away the <laughs> secret and that. Yeah, chimp. Yeah. Took his helmet Jimmy off. Jimmy Chimp. Jimmy Chimpers. <laughs> Little monkey under there. No, definitely not. Okay, let's play Ryan Alone. Did, did he survive? He... Let me yeah. just cover questions. Did he survive? Yeah, yeah he did, yeah. He, he, he was allowed to keep all the awards that he won. Sure. But he wasn't allowed to take part in any other races. Yeah. Didn't happen. Uh, this is Ryan Adams. So, uh... <sighs> I think I first became really excited by the World Cup. That famous year when Maradona did the handball. Do you remember what was that, 1986? 86. Yeah. Oh, that was so exciting. Because obviously he'd been so brilliant in that tournament. And then he did cheat, as we all know. Yeah. What do you what do you make of that? Do you remember that moment, Carl? Well, that, was, that was really formative I, for I me. I know what I made of it. The cunt. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, isn't cheating part of part of all games now? Hang on, here oh, we go, this is controversial. Well, uh, uh, There's a lot of young people who look up to Carl as a role model. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the world we live in now, isn't it? It's, uh, get what you can, how you can. But what's your feeling? Are you the sort of person, I mean, have you ever cheated in a game? Are you that sort of person? Um, I just think, my dad does it a lot. Um. What, in board games and that? Yeah, just, just cards, you know, Monopoly. Um, How does he cheat a monopoly? Just nicks a lot of the money. I'm oh, just straightforward nicks the money. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I love that. But how do you not notice even doing it? He doesn't I'm busy looking at you know what properties I've I've invested in and sure. stuff, and the money's just there, isn't it? So I don't see the point of cheating. No, I don't. Monopoly. I say that to him. I say you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. But to him, it, he's, he's broke the system, hasn't he? He's got round the rules. What do you mean I can only have that much? Who says I can? Bosh. Get some more money. Buy some more hotels. And in a way, that's life, isn't it? Mm. All people with loads of money now, you kind of go, have they made that honestly? Right. You know, I pass big houses in London, and I think, gangsters, got to be gangsters to have a house like that. Yeah. There's no way a normal job, someone who's... Because I know, I'm trying to make money, and I know how hard it is to make money. Because the more money you make, the more hands are out there, taking little bits. So how the hell has this man bought this house? It's got to be a crook. And so do you yourself cheat? Would you consider yourself a cheater? Are you honourable? In games. Well, just generally, do you cheat on anything? No, do you know what? The other week, I'd had a cup of tea and some fish and chips mm. at this pub, and they only took for one. And I went back the next day and said, oh, you didn't charge me for my fish and chips. What a fucking moron. I paid. No, I didn't tell her about the tea, though. <laughs> Got a free tea? The free tea, yeah. I just thought, well, you know, it's pretty good that I've gone back to pay for that. How much is a tea bag? Mm. The water's free. Yeah. I'll have that for free. So, that, again, that's just me. It's like the Mars bar and the paper round. Mm. It's me going, well, I've been good. The fish would have cost money. Potatoes are pretty cheap. But I'll pay for it. But for my goodness, is a little gift. Have a free cup of tea. But who's given you the right to make that decision? That's me, that. That's me. I'm deciding there. Right. I'm in charge. I didn't have to go in there. I didn't have to go back and pay. But I went back and paid. Tell you what, Carl, treat yourself. How's that? Have the cup of tea. All right, I will do. There's the fish and chips. Absolute if she, bollocks. If she was good at her job, <laughs> she'd have remembered. I thought she would have done. In a way, it annoyed me that she didn't go, oh, yeah, so you did. Well done. Thank you very much for coming back. Right. She just was like, did you? Not she looked at me. I know she looked like She looked at me like we didn't even know. Yeah. I was worrying about a staff member getting, sort fired of getting done yeah. or having to pay for it. You I know, know where you're coming at there. One of my first disappointments with football, I was, um, I was 10 years old, okay, and uh, one of the teachers was some... Um, in charge of the football team, my junior school. And uh, I went down to Tutty's, it was, a shop in Reading with my mum. So it's, it's white socks, black shorts, white 
shirt. Uh, got on. Went, went to knocked on his door. I said, uh, "I've got my kit." He went with the trials were yesterday. You've missed it. That was it for a year, right? Next year, or when the trials when the trials got the trials. Okay, he was going. Everyone, I want to give it hundred percent. Right, really try hard. Really try hard. He's watching people play. Right, I made sure that every time I ran by him, I was out of breath. I, <sighs> really, trying, <sighs> every time I ran by him, he sort of looked at me. I think, yeah. Right. <sighs> Came to it. He said, "The team is this. I'm left out." Right. He went past me, and he went. You've clearly got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't make that team either. Yeah, and I didn't, and and uh, and I vowed that day never try hard at anything. Yeah, well, you've certainly kept that up. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Carl? Were you play? Do you play sport at school? Um, a little bit, but it was never taken seriously at school. Anyway, it was. I think the PE teacher was a geography teacher as well. So it's like you know, what yeah. does he know? It was all that. Basically, he put some tracksuit pants on that were always too tight for him. Could see everything. What were you looking at? Because you, you just... couldn't help it. It was in the days when clothing was tight as it is, mm. and then it was like lycra, tracky bottoms. All oh, right. And everyone used to say, "Look at the state of that." But like uh, he's stealing sausages from. It was ridiculous. Londis. Ridiculous. Um, so he didn't know what he was doing anyway. If, if anything, it was dangerous because he didn't know what was what was the capability of a of a ten year old kid's body. Right. He put you through loads of stuff. Right. He didn't like me anyway because he wasn't that good. If you're not that good, teachers don't like you. I do thought they? you'd be pretty good. I wasn't interested. That's the thing. I did right. relay and I got done for swearing. Got whacked on the arse with a baton. Hold on. What? What? Why were you swearing in relay? When, when did that come into it? When did you need to swear in relay? You're running round. How did they because the lads swearing? wouldn't slow down, so I couldn't pass it on. So I sort of said, "Fucking slow down," and uh, he heard me, and then went mental at me. But yeah, so it was never. I mean, Darren Campbell, the 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 athlete, I've told you, I don't know that I was involved in his his training. No, didn't know about this. Yeah, Darren Campbell, the uh, I think he won a gold medal. Didn't he used to push you around in a bath or something? Well, it's not last of the summer wine. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, it was in my go kart. Right. And you used to. It was a motorised go kart, and you had to like pick it up at the back run with it at speed and then drop the wheels down and the engine kicked in. But hold on though, that means you always needed two people to get you going on a go-kart? No, one. He did it. Well, wh where were you? Sat in it. Well then you did need two then to get it going. What are you on about? He, it... I was sat in it, Yeah. he picks it up, mm. runs with it, Yeah. drops it down, <laughs> wheels start, engine starts, off I go. But what would you have done without him? Well I couldn't have done it. So you do need two people then for this motor? Well, one to go... person. I'm sat in it. Yeah, but the, counting you, it's two people needed. Yeah. Fuck me. Jesus well, what's Christ. So, what's so bad about that? Well, how can you how can you have a play with yourself then? <laughs> and you go can't. <laughs> um, sorry, this was part of his official Olympic training. No, no, but I just feel like that was part of his early training, right. which is the important bit in any you know, job or... Well, walk, no, we should life. explain, for people who don't know, he was the bloke who used to push the bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics, wasn't he, for the England team? No, he was a, he was a runner. Well, how is that part of his training then? Pushing a the fucking go-kart? <laughs> what was he doing? Because it's running. But he's running about a yard. No, no, sometimes more than that. Quite a lot. And it's just... Uh, God, what do you want? It's Darren Campbell. <laughs> Pushing me go-kart. You seem to be taking half the credit for his gold medal. All you've done is sat on your arse, you lazy twat. I just kind of think he was he was at the age where it's important. He could have made a decision not to go into it at that point. And I think he was never keen to get in the go-kart. Yeah. He was always keen to push it. And I used to let him. Now, if I said, <laughs> no, I don't want you pushing me go-kart, who knows? I'm just saying I was there at the start. Doing nothing. Providing nothing. Sitting on your arse. Sitting around. Well, letting you, someone else all right, do it. What athletes have you helped? <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't know this was a uh let let's let's do a podcast about athletes we've helped. <laughs> You've not helped him, Carl. I'd have come prepared. <laughs> I bet if he ever did a book, an autobiography, he'd go they you know the early years, Darren Campbell. No, I want to know if he has done an autobiography because we're gonna be looking this up. I remember. The training. I'm making a note of that in for the next weather. time we do anything. Round up Pilkinsons. Darren Campbell. Pushing a go kart. Pushing. Bold. You weren't bald then, were you? No. Had a little hair of a Didn't have very good hair. In crap 
cheap. It wasn't go kind of kart. 120 quid it was. You know how many paper rounds that is? What I like when um, you're watching football on the television is if it goes to a close up of a footballer, it's just kick the ball out, Mr. Gar is gone for a free kick or whatever. If you stay on any footballer for more than 10 seconds, they will either swear or gob. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never needed to gob that much. It's I don't care how knackered I am, I'm never gobbing like that. It's weird, though. The other week, I just sat in the garden, slavering, <laughs> just to see if it would ever run out. And it's amazing. I don't know where it all comes from. What is the that's strangest? That's That's amazing. Just so to that, see if it would run so out. So now he's got to the point in his life where, uh, as a hobby or a pastime or just to count down the minutes before he dies, yeah. he sat in the garden, creating sputum, slavering to see if he'd ever run out. I mean, that's amazing. Where does it all come from? Well, you create it, don't you? But from what? I'm always getting done for not drinking enough water. Salivary glands. But it's amazing. Honestly, I just sat like that with my head forward and just let it drip. Fuck <laughs> wow. me! So Suzanne that comes into the garden like and all she sees is her patient. boyfriend sat like something from one foot of the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, like dribbling, battered around the head with a cricket bat. No, she was, she was did reading you, did something. Did you answer she back to a dictator? Yeah. What did he do? Battered me. But You've I'd got a trench up your ass as well. Yeah, that makes me slather. No, just sat there. What a fucking That's mom. extraordinary. What, what a div you are. And I just had my head there and it continuously... I think I got bored of it before it stopped. <laughs> oh, God! I have never heard anything like this! Oh, God, I need a second opinion! Wanker. It's unbelievable! He just sat there with his head down, slavering, Letting it just That's produce. Extraordinary. You weren't even sort of like <sighs> gobbing. You were just, no, just letting, letting it, letting it sort of drop. So you, you got you've got <laughs> nothing else going on in your life, but you've got time to do this. So your brain wasn't even engaged. How long were you there for? I tell you what, no joking. Probably a good fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> fifteen wow. minutes of sitting with his head forward, Amazing. letting him salivate onto the grass. But do you reckon you could do that amount? I would well, never, do never, try. never, would do never try. Never do it. Never try. I would never have that amount of time. I've never. I've. Ne I, I tell you now, you will never see either of us sat there for no reason in the garden with our head forward and our mouth open, seeing how long we can create saliva. Unless I've just come out of a coma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or a gas attack. Yeah. No, I have a lot of, uh, I'm sort of goz unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great new dance duo. And it, please welcome to the stage. It's goz unlimited. <laughs> Amazing. D uh, didn't you have a little bit of problem in um, China with them all gozzing? Goz unlimited. Oh, God, I tell you. They're just spitting all the time over there. I don't know what it's all about. All the time. That noise of oh. that continuously, that, everywhere you look. That good sort of footballer ball of gob that they sort of, they spit and it kind of flies a couple of, I can't do it. I've tried, I can never do it. Yeah. If I try and spit, it just dribbles down my shirt. I don't That's know why amazing. I can't do it. That's amazing. I've tried in the past, because it used do? to be cool. I remember when I was yeah. a kid, you'd hang around outside yeah, the spa. Yeah, yeah. What you've got to do is you've got to sit in a chair in the garden, just put your head <laughs> forward practice, and yeah. open your mouth and practice. just let the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it all comes out. And uh, you'll probably get bored after about 15 minutes <laughs> okay. if you're a fucking moron. Okay. Uh, uh, so we're having a nice walk, right? You know, uh, nudists do me adding. Sure. <laughs> right. Not uh, a problem though, is it? It's not like being scared of spiders where they might jump out under the chick uh, chicken sink, kitchen sink at you. You know what I mean? It's not a big problem being, having your head done in by nudists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it just annoys me. It sort of ruins the day a little bit. Because it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Take your clothes off if you feel uncomfortable. It's much more relaxing. Yeah, but, well, anyway, right, so I'm walking along the beach, right? Lovely long beach, what have you, you know, watching the sea, picking up shells and that. And what are, your, what are you wearing? What's your natural beach club? When he says picking up shells, I imagine he's on all fours going, oh, yeah. like that, you know what I mean, looking at things. <laughs> <laughs> Just like washing his nuts in the sea to, to get, the, to get them tasty. Yeah, going into the sea and then kind of shaking himself and all the water flows off. <laughs> yeah. I've just got, you know, flip-flops on, pair of shorts, Something and, uh, and like a little, a little light shirt. Sure. Mm. So anyway, walking along, and, 
Suzanne goes, oh, look. All right. And there's this woman, German, I think, uh, coming out of the... How could you tell she was German? Under well, arm hair? I'll get to it. Okay. Forget the under arm hair. <laughs> she came out, it looked like she was smuggling seaweed. <laughs> I'm going to burst! I'm right. going to burst! Oh, God! And, and the, the funny thing is, right, <laughs> she, uh <laughs> She, uh, she was a bit hairy down there, was she? It, mental. <laughs> I felt bad because I hadn't had a shave for two days. Right? Looked at her. Just, it was ridiculous. She might as well have kept her trunks on. <laughs> it was just like she was wearing furry trunks, right? So anyway, oh, so I'm walking around. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, go on in. So oh. Suzanne's like, oh, look, and I'm like, oh, not again. You know, because every time we go away, there always seems to be one of these. Is she by herself, it? this woman? Well, the weird thing was, she was with her husband, right? Oh, yeah. But he had shorts on. He yeah. was happy, right? Yeah. But every time, like, because I walked past her and he sort of ran off, because he's, he's embarrassed. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's nothing normal about it. How, what can he do? He can't go, all right, mate. Because he knows it's, it's odd, right? How so old I'm, was he? Uh, sorry, how old was she? It's hard to tell when someone hasn't got clothes on. Do you know what I mean? It's, they, they always look older, don't they, when, when they haven't got clothes on anyway. But I'd say she was about 40, 41. Okay. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I walked past, and, and the annoying thing is, she, she got there on a bike, right? No clothes on, little pair of boots next to the bike. So if you can wear boots, just pop some shorts on. <laughs> you know what I mean? That takes more effort for me, putting boots on. So put the shorts on, right? right. So anyway, so the husband kept running off. I walk past, and, and I, I'm getting annoyed because I'm saying, well, we've got to walk past them again on the way back. I know the fact they're scuttling away when Carl walks past. Like when you lift up a bit of, um, sort of iron sheeting in the woods and loads of mice run away. Yeah. It's like whenever Carl goes, that nudists run away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, but no, so, so, we sort of come walking back and what have you, and, and, you know, I have a, have another look and what have you, and he runs off again. Why are you another look if it offends you so much? Oh, you might as well just, just have a look, you know what I mean? It's just putting it on show and what have you. But the interesting thing was, I just wondered whether the, the husband... Cause if I, the husband were nude, you'd look at his tackle. Because remember, when you went to see those two strippers and it was a woman and a man, and they whipped their shorts off, you said you looked at his tackle first. Uh, I think any bloke would. Wow. You would. You just check it out, it's natural, isn't it? You just go, oh, all right. <laughs> well, it is normal or whatever. Because you don't know if you... you know what I mean? You don't know if what you've got's right until you see someone else's. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go but on. anyway, so, um, but he got us talking, because I was, then, as soon as I saw her, sort of, today's been ruined a bit, so I'm walking up the beach. <laughs> it's been ruined! Walking up the beach with Suzanne going, how does it happen? Do you know what I mean? Why do people do this? What's, what's, what fun are they getting out of it and what have you? And, um, I just was thinking, is there any chance that that fella, right, didn't even know that she was a nudist until they went away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I said to Suzanne, if, if, say if I met Suzanne, it's like we're getting on, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then you go off on holiday and you go, you haven't got much, uh, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, no, no, it's fine, this is plenty, and I'm thinking that's weird. And then we go down the beach and she whips her knickers off. <laughs> I'd, I'd be annoyed, but there's nothing I could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sure. So I'm just wondering whether that's what happened to this fella. Every time someone came walking up, he was like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. And yeah. he kept nipping off. Yeah. Finding something else to do. Look at some shells. <laughs> <laughs> so what, well, I'm what? wondering, Rick, if at some point, maybe today or in future shows, we should get a nudist, you know, one of those official nudist spokespeople, you know, because all these nudist organisations, get them on the phone, justify themselves to Carl, because, you know, in, in his mind, they are, what would you say, weirdos, freaks? I just don't, I don't quite get it. I was reading something in one of the supplements last weekend, and some journalist went round to some, uh, whatever you call it, some... Resort or whatever and for, just for the nudes sure. and that, and it's well, just they're playing like, volleyball. Well, the annoying thing was bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that annoying? You don't play a sport where you got to bend over. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you, nice Carlitos. How are you doing? You're a shocker. Shocker. I'm a shocker. Very pleased to meet you. Let me show you around. You're a lot bigger than I thought. I thought they would have given me a little fella to sort of try oh, out with. Oh, you want a little fella? How big? This big? Smell. Well, <laughs> <that big. laughs> no, come so here, boy. Sort of kick. Watch. I know it's 
Ricky that set it up, and it's funny, you know, to him. But this is like how accidents happen, and it? it's like the start of casualty. You watch that program, everyone's having fun. It's a party or something. People are going on holiday in a bus, and you know it's all going to go wrong. And that's how this feels. It feels like the start of casualty. That's just someone being chucked around. That's going to be me out there. I mean, does he know the full story that I'm here to see the Seven Wonders? I haven't come here to be trained as a... No, he doesn't, know. No, well, it's... I should tell him, really. Look better on you. Wow. You look just like a wrestler. Look like a right knobhead. Hey, come on. Squat and then jump. Can you your legs. go like that? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's Try all right. It. Whoa! Good job. Really? Yeah, I almost got it. Okay, we're going to start with a basic training of wrestling. Are you ready? No, hope for don't, man. <laughs> You'll be okay in a couple of days. Come on. Ready? we got to follow the lead, okay? Come on. There you go. See how easy that was? Obviously, Okay? Can I be you in that one? Shit house. Come on, you shit! Oh, I missed a thing. <laughs> Good job! Well, I just... Oh, I'm sick. Muevelo, muevelo. You're sick. Don't throw up. Is it normal to feel this sick? Oh, yeah. Did you give up? Yeah. Oh. Come on, Carl. I can't. There's enough one. Shocker, I can't. You see me shaking. It hasn't done me confidence any good, really, because I thought it was fitter than that. What do you think Suzanne said she saw you now? I'm not letting her watch this one. Whenever, whatever night this goes on, I'm going to take her out for something to eat. I want to stay in. Watch. No, we're going out. For fuck's sake. You are lit. In two minutes, downstairs. I'm joking, was he, when he said he was going to come round at four? He was just having a, having a bit of fun with me. A nice start to the day, moon's still out. Yeah, the thing is, I don't know what power I've got. That's the thing. If I start wrestling with him, I don't know how strong I am. I might do some damage. By accident. Because I don't go about punching people and stuff, so I don't know how hard I can hit. I might, I might really hurt him. Say if I'm just a proper mugger. Yeah, I'm walking bit, right. down the street, right? Mm. I look at you. I'm going got this way. Yes. Yeah, hang on. You stop right, hang me. Hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, just get back a bit. So, so I, I'm walking down the street, and mm. I think this fella looks like he's, he's got a few quid. Mm. And I'd go, I'd go, I'd go. Excuse me, mate. You haven't got the time on you, have you? Listen, give us your money. Oh. Ah, all right. Mm. Give us your money. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. What will happen? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I got it the first time. Come on, go! Quickly! Faster! Come on, come on! Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, God! Mm, mm, mm. Quick! Mm, 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 mm. Fucking twerk! He doesn't know what my health is. At no point since I've been here has he gone, no, Carl, you know, it's a serious issue. Have you got any health problems? He's always pushing a little bit more. He loves giving pain out. He's not a Buddhist, is he? He's a lunatic. Do it! Do it! Oh. Right. Right. What am I doing? Seriously, what is going on here? OK, Carl, I'll give you a challenge. What sort of challenge? Ah! What's the other challenge? This glass balloon. I'm going to throw the needle from this way to get this balloon. You're going to throw a needle through the glass? Yes. Hit the balloon. Yes. Hole in glass. Yes. So you can. Hey, hang on a minute. Right. One. Two. 
No way. Jesus. I'm impressed with that. You want to have a try? Here we go. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. <laughs> Kung Fu, I know that much. <laughs> that shouldn't hurt, should it? Just having a cup of tea. You're weak, because you don't do any exercise, so that brings you down, and that makes you ill. So, I've arranged some exercise for you. It'll make you feel good. But I've done wrestling. I mean, there's there's nothing greater or more honourable than being a champion sumo wrestler. You guys are huge. They're like superstars over there. <laughs> it's just all about the nappy thing, isn't it, with Ricky? Making me look a knob. You can't look good in a nappy. A baby doesn't look good in a nappy. It's not a good look. And it's not even a skill that I want to learn, really, sumo. What, what training do they have to do? It's just pure... It's just eating, isn't it? That's the workout. It's just something for fat people to do, which is good, because fat people haven't got many sports. You know, I suppose it gets them off their arse. I just don't want to be under it. Are you having a laugh? Have you seen the size of it? Look at them, they're like two rhinos at each other. It's unbelievable the force they're cracking. Just that is it, that's what you have to do, you have to push them out of the ring. Are there any of them that you think you could fight? Yeah, I'm over there with the blue shirt and glasses on. Can we at least get out of the nappy thing? Can we at least just say we don't need to do that? Because it's more about the pushing and the shoving and the fight than the fashion. What do you want to wear, Paul? I just need uh, underpants. But they're not wearing their pants, are they? No, probably because they can't get any to fit them. Carl? Carl, yeah. How hey, Carl. How are you? Yeah. I know, ma ma <laughs> Say again? Ma ma the, the nappy. Oh, Let's go. Just wear these. Hurry up. Yeah. Right. Is it okay if I keep these on? No. Just give it a go. Let's just have a look. Try. Try. Please, can we just try? Yeah. Go on. No. It's fine. It is. You yeah, but. But, but I'll be facing you. You shouldn't be looking at my arse. This is fight. It's not arse competition. Once that is on, I can suck it all in and you will not see. Can we just try? It's nipping. It's definitely nipping. It's um, special sacred water or something. You're supposed to drink their their water. Could be sweat or anything, that. Bring water. It's fine if we get the shits anyway, innit? Put this on. Hey! Let me do the 
mach das Ding ab, ich sehe sie. Push! I'm sure he was checking for me prostate. No! Ricky's always saying I should have that done at my age. He's left a fucking ring up there. How was it? Um, honestly, I got absolutely battered. Thrown all over the place. Do you know that, you know that sort of classic nature thing of a, a killer whale throwing a seal through the air? It was like that. If it stick a nappy on that seal, that is what you've got. Uh, got sweat in my eyes. Wasn't mine. That's a first. I was, yeah, I was hoping that one, you'd sort of be engulfed in the water. Yeah. And then you got that. Also, that it would give you a giant wedgie. That's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> well, well, basically, you've got your bucket list then. I haven't had mine yet, but you've got your wish. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I've arranged a cosy hotel for you. So, um, go and have a sleep. All right? I'm leaving my underpants on. They're all wearing them. They're not wearing them. This isn't a costume to fight in. I'm not happy with this. The fight was one thing. Looking like this, and I'm going to get battered. It's degrading. Have you got the top on, right? I don't know. I've no idea. It's not the sort of thing I normally wear, Richard, if I'm honest. So I don't know if I've got it right or not. I'm sorry about that. It feels too small. It's like a small cardigan. Are you sure that you haven't got one of the kids' clothes mixed up with this? I look gormless in the shadow. I've never had that. I've never seen my shadow and thought, what a diva look. I look like an acorn. Right, I suppose I best get this wrestling training done then. Oh, shit. Hang on, why have you got these clothes on? Why am I wearing this? You're all this on. You're kidding, eh? I'm uh, very excited because Peter Crouch is in the tournament. Now, Peter Crouch... You identify with him, I, don't you? I, I love Crouchy. He's exactly the same height as me, yeah. six foot seven. He's sort of lanky and awkward looking. Right, but brilliant. I mean, still a very... You know, let's not forget that he is playing in the national squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a striker. You know, he's got an excellent track record of scoring for England. Admittedly, maybe not in the super top important games, but nevertheless... Tremendous. He's like your role model. He's like your pinup. He's a role model. He? he had the. He wrote an autobiography, which I, I was going to call my autobiography, Tall Stories. Crouchy got there first, but good luck to him. I give it to him. Yeah. Well, I, I'm happy for him to do that. I once got someone who came up to me in a in a in a club once and said, "Are you Peter Crouch?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I thought she thinks I'm crouchy. What's the problem? I, let's see how far we can get with this before the truth will out. But I she was went, disappointed. I didn't know you wore glasses. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm sort of off duty. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't wear it on the field. But. Do you think he'd have had a different career if he'd have worn glasses from the age of five, like you? This is one of the reasons I've not been a great footballer. 
have you ever seen me doing any form of athletics or sport? No. Because I like to think I look quite elegant. You know, I feel like I'm actually in control of it. But when I look back, if like someone's videoed it, I look like one of those giant costumes in It's a Knockout. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, where they, the arms are flapping and, and they, the just, head. they just yeah. fall over. No real they, expression on their yeah. head. Yeah. But one of the things I was disappointed at, I was looking at, because um, obviously around this time of the year, there's lots of advertising because of the footballers are all getting endorsements. And I was looking to see what each one was doing. And Wayne Rooney, he's got endorsement deals with Nike, with Nokia, with Coca Cola, Lampard, Pepsi, and Adidas. Peter Grant, do you know what he's advertising? Go on. Pringles. <laughs> it's not. It's not the coolest one, is it, Pringles? <laughs> I mean, even the name Pringles. Really? I know. It's sort of like an insult, isn't it? It is. Who's that Pringle? <laughs> is that, uh, hold on. Is that Crouchy? No, it's Steve Merchant. <laughs> I mean, I love Pringles. Yeah. And I'm pleased to see Crouchy's associated, but I don't was bother, disappointed. Don't bother mentioning Pringles, thinking you'll get some free Pringles, because he went on about munches, and then we got another fucking sniff. Oh, true, true. What do you think of that, Carl? But you, are you a fan of Crouchy? You must be, uh... Uh... They're all much of a muchness. That's Honestly, true, That's nonsense. I didn't want to come in here and start talking about football. I'll watch it. Um, what do I mean, you mean, I didn't want to come in here? I was like, what, what, what a thing to say. What? Imagine, imagine Gary Lineker going, hello, what well, BBC? I didn't want to be here today to talk about football. Fed up, I've got better things to do. No, no, but it's something you talk about. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous coming in here talking about it before we've even kicked a ball. Who knows what's going to happen? If there's one thing that's good about it, it's that, isn't it? Not well, that's what I don't understand. I don't understand all this punditry, why we have a three-hour build-up, then they talk about it half-time, then they talk about it for half-hour afterwards. I mean, for me, it's like, it's kick-off, who won? They did, 3-1. All right, cheers, let's get on with work. But also, we like the whinging after. We are, a, you know, this country loves a moan. They love it. Yeah. I love it. Love a good moan. I don't know how we'd be if we won. We'd go, all right, uh, what would we talk about? Yeah. See, back in 1966, people weren't as miserable. No. Okay, let's, well, hang on, I'd like to hear this theory extrapolated. Well, they weren't, were they? People were, um, you know, the war had happened, like, not that long ago. Right. People getting on with it, 66, everyone's smart, you know, you dressed up if you went out, you know, they weren't on as much money. Uh, the footballers. Footballers. <clears throat> it, was, it was just a game of football. Whereas now, it's like all this build-up going on. Just get on with it. You know, I'm sick of it, honestly, I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I'm with it. you, I'm with you. I do think it's ridiculous that there's a the, there's a match and the programme before, it's like two hours before it and then an hour after Well, that's just a shameless attempt to keep people... I mean, let's be honest, you and I have been guilty of being involved with that, haven't we? We've done various little skits and sketches in the past. But that's fun. I mean, that, we do that for us, not for them. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care whether people like it or not. I, I did it because it was fun. I dressed up um, you and a dwarf. The day doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Well, I was in a pub watching that year, and I'd forgotten that we'd done that, or at least that it was going to be shown that day. So I'm in this pub, it's crammed, obviously, and that comes on, the tennis on the big screen, and suddenly that's that sketch, right? A couple of things about me. One, no one was paying attention. <laughs> I was furious. I was thinking there's a couple of good-looking birds here. <laughs> but at least I'm on the fucking telly. Oh, look at the telly. Me and the sketch was uh, Ricky Gervais and Warwick Davis. And Dwarf. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing crunchy. No one, not paying attention. The few that were, not amused at all. Could not get my mother, of course, remember famously said that's the funniest thing you've ever done, <laughs> which we knocked off in about 20 minutes. No one in the pub seemed interested, and then a few people like looked round, looked at me, looked at the screen, sort of shrugged, carried on going. Nothing, nothing, but also kind of it's, it is embarrassing that situation. I was on a flight, um, internal flight in America, and uh, you know, on the, uh, the internal flights, um, you don't get individual screens, they give you individual players, but there's also screens all down the aisle sure. for people, right, but Ghost Town was on, Ooh. looked over, someone watching extras, <laughs> and and I had to make sure that at no point did I glance up at the screen, like he's watching himself, <laughs> yeah. and make sure I flicked over whenever it came up, the office or extras. Yeah, if I'm on the tube and I'm flipping through the paper, sometimes there'll be an interview with you that I'm not aware is going to be in the paper, yeah. and I have to flip on by because I don't want to plug on the tube going, oh, reading about your mate, are you? <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't get enough of him, do you? Need to be reading, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I just... know. <laughs> Carl. Have you been uh, recognised? Uh, do you ever get recognised much? Yeah, now and again. But I haven't done anything of any worth, however it's almost like recognising a neighbour or something, because they sort of go, oh, it's him. And then the other one might go, what does he do? Go, oh, I don't know. It's not like I've done something... Right, of any worth. Of any worth, yet. Yeah. None of us have done anything of any worth. It's all relative to the entertainment industry. You know, whatever you think of The Office, 
you know, I'm very proud of it, but I haven't secured a bunker in enemy territory. Mm. I haven't given a kidney away. Do you know what I mean? It's all relative. It's just, did you entertain anyone? Did you, you know, bring a smile to someone's face? Was it a laugh? I, I think you're forgetting all those emails I pass on to you for those people that have had traumas in their lives. You know, the earthquake victim. There's people that have lost relatives or had, you know, terrible life-threatening diseases and they say the podcast got them through. Doesn't that warm the cockles of your heart? Uh, well, normally it's, it's gone straight to you, hasn't it? And you just forward it me on, so it's it's almost like spam to me. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't feel as special because it's like here you go, look at this, you know. Unbelievable. What do you think about George Best using up his liver, then getting another one and getting pissed again? Clever. Well, that's always going to encourage it, isn't it? I've always said that. What? The moment we can replace stuff, people just go, "Oh, sod it." Like what smokers. would you do if you gave someone a kidney, and then with it. and they started just swung down the pub again, doing drugs and shit? And well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hand it out to someone just just like that, would I? I think you should be allowed to say, right, who's it for? Can I meet them, right. and then have a chat with them, right. saying, have you learnt your lesson? Well, I'm going to do it. Okay, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little um, kid who wants a, a kidney. Okay, um, and you've come to me. I'm, I'm at the top of the list. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Good. Are you going to give me one of your kidneys so I can live? I don't know. Um... Well, I'm at the top of the list, so why is your head so round? No, it's definitely not. Why? Definitely He's a little not. kid. Look He's at a him. Little kid. Pale. No, I need. I need He's a kidney. Cheeky though, isn't he? No, cheeky. please, Lovely please, kid. round head. Can I have a, your kidney? No, you can't. Oh, have come it. on, right, you've got let's two. See another kid. Let's see another kid. No, Lesson I'm at the top. I'm top learned. of the fucking list. Give me one of your kidneys, you round-headed twat. No. And I hold wouldn't on. feel bad about not giving it you. Well, hold on, though. Can we have a second opinion from the nurse? Wanker. Thank right. you, nurse. I would not feel bad about walking away from that kid and saying you can not have a kidney. So you're gonna, you're gonna. Do you know what? I'm gonna take this kidney out and bin it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Do you know who that kid went on to become? Go on. Winston Churchill. Right. Well, maybe I helped. It's like Darren Campbell all over again. I made him stronger. I was tough with him. He saw how tough the world is. No, but he didn't. It, this is an alternative universe where he died because you never gave him that kidney. Yeah. Eh, well, you can't worry about that then, can you? If you're gonna, if you're gonna start going that far back and forward and stuff, but I think it, I don't know what I'd expect someone to be like. Just want them to go. What do you eat? I'd, I'd say write down your diet. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm gonna really. I'm gonna treasure this kidney. I'm gonna treasure it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna really work hard, and I'm gonna make something like more than you did. So I'll. Um, so my this your kidney is gonna be a lot better off for me than you, you lazy tosser. I tell you that. If you want, if you want okay. achievement, then uh, you know I, I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna do really well. I'm like you, you thick little round-headed shit. So the quicker you get the fucking kidney out of your useless body yeah. and into mine, we'll all be happy, won't we? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go away and think about it for a month. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Don't have to get nasty. Sick of it. I'm always helping people out. Uh, That's a big ask, isn't it? If I came to you, Rick, in all seriousness, yeah, and and you could give me a kid, would you give me a kidney? What if I end up needing it? Well, yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? That you're doing something. Cause Can I have moment... it back? Can I have it back if I need no. it? What? No, because I need it. I've only, I've, mine are failing. I need at least yes. one. I need at least one. Yeah, you need one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is on loan. Because if my other one goes, I want that back. Because then I'll be on one. Well, no, you. Yeah, but then we're both on one. No, no. Right. You've got y yours. Yours are fucked. So yeah. you might as well be on none. I've got two. Okay. I will give you one. Yeah. Right. With the express understanding that if my remaining one packs up, I want that one back. It's on loan. If we both live out our life, then so be it. But if this other one goes and they said, well, you need another kidney, I go, right, I know where I've kept one for the last ten years. So it's you're going to come to me, right, mm. you've gone knock knock, I've opened the door, my beautiful supermodel wife is mm. there. She's make... going, oh, his kidneys are brilliant now. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it, it's great, he never stops having the sex. Yeah. She's making us iced teas. Right. You know, she says, come in, Rick. Yeah. Sit down. Mm. So good. She says, I love you. Thank you so much. That's right. Don't this worry lovely about it. man. I know you've not got long to live because you're old yeah. and fat. Yeah. You've had a good innings. Well, you've had a good 10 years, though, haven't you, with this kidney? And that was a, you know. But uh, I tell you what, love this man. You can return the And favor. he's so young. And we've Give got, me back my fucking kidney. We've got two beautiful children. Right. I tell you what, 
Give me my kidney back and have one of theirs. Two beautiful kids. Yeah. Who's small little there you kidney, go. There's small little kidneys and there's good There's more yet. to choose from. They're growing you. They're growing small you. It's kidneys. like when you put a little plant in a big pot. They grow. You're, they're, they're catch up. They're, the kidneys are growing too. too so I'll have my small. kidneys back and you've got four to choose from there. Well, take one of each and you'll have two little kidneys to make one big kidney. Johnson, can you have this man removed from my house? <laughs> Would you give anyone a kidney, Carl? Suzanne. I'm not sure you would give Suzanne tricky, a kidney. Tricky, well, you yeah. obviously you'd give Suzanne a kidney, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, well, would you or are you just saying that? I suppose I would. I don't really like the idea of it. So if what you're saying what are you saying to Suzanne right now if she's listening to this podcast? Carl, good luck. Um bit of good luck. I you know I need a kidney. And oh. it's got quite rare. Mm. Well, we've got the same sort of blood group and everything, so uh Yeah, you've got two. I got none. Bibbidi Bob, one each. Let's have a good life. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you'll have to uh, have to have it. Which one are you thinking of going for? Because the uh, I think the right one's a bit dodgy because they had the kidney stones. Well, you keep that. Do you want I'll that have, one? I'll have the left one. No, I'll, I'll tell you what. You have that one because when I was in all the pain, you were going. It can't be that bad. So you have it. Mm. It's in good working order. They've looked at it. Yeah. But it is prone to stones. <laughs> that he's using this to get back at her. <laughs> he can't be that bad. It's like poetic justice. He can give her the kidney she didn't believe was that painful. So let her have that. And um, I don't know what's life like with one kidney. So you've got to be more much? careful. You've got di you know, specific diets. Yeah, it is more dangerous. It's more of a strain on it, but you know, don't like talking about it. It's all uh, freaks me out. Freaks me out. It's all doing stuff now. The kidney's doing stuff. Yeah. My teeth are hurting still. Still got a little bit of toothache going on there. Mm. I've got a sweat on. All stuff's going on without me knowing. Germs within round. I've had jabs for rabies. I've had hepatitis A and B. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> I've had A and I've had B. That's whizzing round my body. Body's in shock, isn't it, at the moment? It doesn't know what's going on. I've had... Uh, How is it notifying you of the shock? Well, I think, I, I, like I say, I keep getting this sweat, and uh, what else have I had? Typhoid. <sighs> Doesn't that, they shouldn't, all this stuff shouldn't be in my body, should it? And we don't really know, do we? They're saying, yeah, have this, have that, shove it in your arm, it's alright. But we don't really know. Long term effect. I've got rabies in me. I never thought I'd have to have that. Tetanus. I've had. TB. Well, enjoy the World Cup, everyone. Come on, England. Come on, boys. Had um. The guard and all. One for if I get bit by a dirty monkey. <laughs>
What do you mean? Well, if you've got one head, you'd have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just, it was the fact that he had one face and two bodies that I didn't think... But why do you keep saying one <laughs> face and two bodies as why opposed to one, one head? head and two bodies? We're all the man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, well, surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. Oh, oh, roll I'm up, roll up, see the man with one face. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. So it's, it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is... That fella, you know, the one-faced man, the three-breasted woman. He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what I'm saying. Well, they've all... That, they that all, isn't the peculiar thing about him. No, well, they all had names like that. Right. But he was one thing, in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It was ju it just said un unidentified. What, what does it look like? Um, Sort of... Sort of testicles for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 it just reminded me when you were talking about What do you mean, strange. testicles for eyes? And what is it, do they have a normal body? I didn't even look at that. Oh, for f no, So... that's what I'm saying, though, you're attracted to, to the odd, oddness of the thing. And that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. You know, it, it, it'll be odd for a minute. And then, I'm sure... For him, it'll for him it will be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they will get used to you. I've got my head round it a bit more, and, and the way that there's loads of people in the world, mm. and yet you don't see people with, like, dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street going, oh, everyone's got one head. That's yeah. weird. Suzanne, see any dangly eyes today? No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> mm. That jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had... I've been treatment. in and out, honestly. I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, you had so kidney stones, all right? No, no, sorted. but seriously... I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, okay. I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later, I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone, so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60 year old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there's an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> he was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital, leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors. Uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something. It's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> I, 
honestly unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like that. <laughs> just like with a cough. How would you cover it with a cough? Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. And the pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen and that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? <laughs> uh, so that was on the other night. Uh, I and, thought it was uh, with your lodger. So, um... And she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> he didn't. That is he did. cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could on the way to pain. the hospital. So, uh, he's always not an ambulance driver. So anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's all right, yeah. So this this gay fella came through. And, How did uh, you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A he doctor, was, you mean? No, he was like a he was a nurse. Right. And he he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got As me you mentioned in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it. That of course you'd let him do it. He's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh, hello. And he said, yeah, let's pop that. I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> But, but what I mean is that night I would I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> oh, it's just weird, isn't it? How your body just goes, let him get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you? When when you're in that much pain and you need and a they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled "My Ward." All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, I don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience, trauma, a trauma. Yeah, I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So, I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Bye. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make I the like same it, mistake. I like it, because you know why? It's like... He even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left He left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. To be honest, I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good. Of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that is some more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth, This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and um, a lot of tourists go through the area no, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it'll get stuff because it'll look like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give it, oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give. Yeah, but it's all Squirrels stuff, learn that. But you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park, there's squirrels waiting at the gate. You have to give them a toll to go in. They don't have to give them a minute. They come up to you every time. You fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, isn't it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water and it was it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's where its life has come to. <laughs> A it mollusk that's like down it's, on its fucking yeah, lap. It didn't live in a big country house no, and its wife it left it, the kids I was, went, it started I was hitting the ball. It and I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just. Last <laughs> meal? People but it wouldn't don't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It Not doesn't have. It must like a leaf or a. a you know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it's it. It's not an insect. Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that. <laughs> No, it's part it's of that. They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. Why do you think it's part of that Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's It's in not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not, I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> So it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> when I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. Do you know, like Sorry, that? you you just started miming counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now. My kidney's aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Get, you are one yourself, of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there for free. ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. it's the about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here. I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know. I was busy counting. <laughs> One prediction for the future, Carl, is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world would be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life. You'll just need the egg or sperm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? That, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's oh. been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. Yeah. Different point, though, isn't it? That's, That's a different, different point. point Not listening to a word yeah. Ricky said. But no, no, it's just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <laughs> ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that, that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Well, 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 no, well then that, that doesn't sort of... What do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, there's are you so saying... Many... Are you saying, because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't... You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all... If we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, they'll still sort of fancy, because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. 
Sorry, so but what's this got to do what's with what's this world like? Describe, you, because describe Ricky's, a typical town or or country. It's setting. exactly right. Imagine London. You've still got the gherkin. You've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they everyone's just, still yeah. Uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, I, have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on, because it's not no, like because a strict... because we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now yeah. at a school photo, yeah. you look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? Well, you can't <laughs> tell the difference between <laughs> some all... of the girls and the blokes. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not yeah, his school no. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? But we will change. Yeah, we'll change his little things. Years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that, that will go in evolution. Think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little finger. <laughs> I've been watching my little finger. I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking, you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not, not, to say, not, not French fries. Hang on, though. Well, at what point are we us, then? They are. This is good. Go on, go on. Go on. No, because if I, if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge yeah. and the stuff them, them kids on that now. I just think, where have they stored that? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But you're getting, it's forgotten again, about. basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. So, what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah. All right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yeah. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> I'm never going to use my head! Well, I'm not, because what what's the your point? Head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, Oh, right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find the new... No, no, only... You want to see naked ladies? Okay. No. I don't watch University Challenge and go, I want to be like them. I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted... I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is... Is, is, uh, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> what an amazing game! What an amazing because, intellectual oh pursuit that is! What a lucky lady. <laughs> what, does what does Suzanne say to that? Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along and then I'm saying, oh, it might be this one or whatever. I, remember, the... I love that because I remember once, it was about um, five years ago, uh, Carl and Suzanne were round near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlour games, um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals. And you have to go, uh, first one is A, then B. So, you say, aardvark. Next one goes, beaver. Next one goes, cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went, egg. <laughs> 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 and he was on egg. <laughs> So, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweler of Fabergé is well-known for his jewel-encrusted war egg. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. That's, That's what I'm right. saying. Story. It's gonna, if you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his right, head looks like hay. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Steve's one, I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the net 
next step in convenience with technology and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun you know computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch so the next step may be oh you, you won't forget your palm top you won't forget your ipod you won't forget your laptop it's it's in there it's an interface I know, but it makes us but lazy carl it's not a question of it's not that it's not that google is now carl it <laughs> looks like it looks like carl but it's just spouting you know little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there he's not the man i'm at it <laughs> right look at it like this Jeez. Jesus. Look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go, Ooh. where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to uh, Dorset. Aye. Oh, aye. What road are you taking? Don't know. I'll just pop on the sat nav. Now, mm. that's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, how are you getting there? Uh, car. All oh, right. Yeah. Which uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why? What do you want to know? Oh, just just making a just making a friendly chat. Just you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know really. I've, I've got a sat nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there. And what do you mean? What? 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 Easy, isn't it? Well, I don't, I'm not. A, I'm not a pigeon. I don't. Well, you got an A to Z. Well, well yeah, but it's yeah, it's on a computer. The A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and, and lazy? Lazy, don't not it? Not really. No. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? I said it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit. Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. Ty, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road. We need to get going. What is this? Uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who? to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because Fuck we really got to get going. He's a fucking dickhead. Who, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, we're we're just, just, we're just telling him we're using the sound yeah. yeah. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but but look, look what's happened. Who the fuck are you? Would Columbus found America if he had had a sat nav? Yes! No, he wouldn't! He'd have put it in America and he would have taken it he to wouldn't. He wouldn't. America! He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody just hold goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, <laughs> be on a sat-nav? No. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... What's the difference between the sat-nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> From finding oh, a continent to a little I love that! I love that! Little I'm, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Well, I don't know yet, it's the unknown world. Where are you taking? Just a uh, boat like all lazy swim, you can <laughs> I love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time. Oh, got a compass. Don't you know where north is, you twat? <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> because you find you find new things. I'm for everyone. Well, down... Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the. Uh... I just think, you know, Columbus. Right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Uh, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? You never go Columbus. You never went and bought a sat nav. <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go out. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate. Is fancy dress. You know, but I like looking at the. Uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right. So you found a fancy dress shop. Where are you supposed to be going? That you got. You had time to get sidetracked and go in a. I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> just cut Amazing. Me. That's the last time. You don't want to get lost. You, you don't, don't want to get lost. Because no, 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 I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself. Get a sat nav. No, I'm. I'm just saying. You, that's that's how you find little treats along the way. And you, <laughs> next time you pass it, or next time someone says, "Do you know where the fancy dress shop is?" I go, yeah, I do. You go, I have no idea because I was lost. No, I didn't no, know where no, it was. No, 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 no. Normally, I'll. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you, lazy cunt. Have you got an AZ? Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself, you lazy twat. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you learned? You keep going on about all this learning. What yeah. have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, sum up, sum up mankind's foray into the future. I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future, it will then be read in a hundred years' time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions just that you predict think, no, Just, just you... sum it up, just sum it up. Um, I believe, start off with, I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will. Okay, start off and with that. And then what, just have like a top five? Well, no, or just... just well, maybe uh, just predictions. 
Just put it in. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So and then just... a little, and then a little thing to remember. And remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkerton, predict that in the future mankind will uh... start off with that. Start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. All right, I'm Carl, and uh, the future. He's already gone off road. It's a scary road. place, but the future's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, your predictions are. Mm. Well, we're 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 all. Uh... Mm. It's not a sound bite. Yeah. Keep going. Going. I'm, I'm giving him space. Okay. Okay. Give him a book. I've got, I've got to think about. I okay. Don't get it think. Wrong. Okay. Think first. Think and then then say it. Okay. Starting from now, these words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. I think trousers are going to be stopped being made. Just because right. you see, you see kids now, they've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution, just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> That's the evolution of the trouser because it's dropping incredibly well, down the You see, now you can see kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one. <laughs> okay, That's an amazing make... one. They'll stop making trousers in the future. Good, good. Okay. Uh, we're going to get weaker. We're, we're, that's already that's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> right. So we've definitely that's that's evidence. You can't argue with that. I'll probably put that first because he goes right. What's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Okay, they number three. They used to say, "I'm gonna die." Keep the dogs away. They used to say. They used to say, "Put your trousers up." Now they say, "Put them down." You can. <laughs> <laughs> number three. <laughs> right, number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll, and they go, "Ooh, what can number three be?" Uh, I reckon we'll blend all our food. No, because they're the... Thought, man, we were going to make a point of our race! <laughs> yeah. I never thought it would be! We'll blend all our food! <laughs> <laughs> like oh, like they do for babies, you mean? Just, oh. yeah, I just think, oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen yeah. chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. yeah. We had wisdom teeth. Yep. Oh. Now they say, oh, take them out, you're not using them. Yep. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yep. Mm. Sorbet. Yep. Soups. <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, everything's softer, Just isn't it? When you get an though, avocado, yeah. they say, yeah. is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think, I think chewing is a t sort of a thing of the, the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You mm. don't have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon, uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth, mm. done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number 10. <clears throat> This is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're, if, if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean is what? that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So, what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads ghetto. of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental, pointless, would never work. Absolutely yeah. one of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, It yeah. could be done. It, it, I reckon it, it could be easily why done. Why would it be? Okay, okay, because... that last one, that's number four. That's a load of bollocks. Um, so, what's number five? 
there'll be, fine. There'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, no we're not running out no, of words. No, we are. Now. We are definitely no, running out of words. Using the, it's using the letters we've no, already got yeah. and making new words. Yeah, we're yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have Plenty. you any idea? You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet mm. is shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. They go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling we're, at all. We're, we are. We're not. I mean, it's a stupid... Boswallocks. <laughs> in shampoo. Now, there's a word where they've gone, well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. <laughs> you just made that up? No. no it's that, it's that they go, a new, new with Boswallocks and Ceramide R. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to invent, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. <laughs> Yeah, no, I am. That's a real word. Yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago, when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, Go on. sodium. That sounds. <laughs> that sounds all right. He likes sodium. He does like with that. Because it sounds like an, an something in it, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswells? Are you wanting to hear that? <laughs> no, it's real. It's, it's, it's real, and that's because 26 letters. We've wasted them. Years ago, we went mental with the, you know. Pneumonia sticking a P on it, and uh, there's loads of words where you go, What's that like doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now they can't do that, they've gone, Whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? <laughs> and now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff, yeah. Let's not waste letters, let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things no. cars are called things like you know GTI or something because they're going, Well, I can't think of the word to call this, so they're giving them letters. Think of a word now, think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word that hasn't up. been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be you. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's like Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. <laughs> well, I think we've, uh, I think we've, um, sorted out the future. Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> the spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them, don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet, that lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised? I'd be surprised uh, if there was something... It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now, because we have to, we live no, in a world don't. now. We do, we know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or... Well, no, well, no, look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd, no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or... What do you mean it's like not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing, it's not something that's... AIDS hasn't been, like, living under the soil for millions of years, but I'll wait till the 1980s and I'll come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in, not, I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms. There's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like, almost like bacteria. Sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to... I don't think she can. Just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s, we uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented. And, and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, it's all, it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go, it's all right, it's a good idea, 
but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the Frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like, look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who but said he's up there with <laughs> Einstein? In, one, PR of, people in one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You got Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson. <laughs> and that's, and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now. Because everything that's needed, remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, like certainly, yeah, 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 yeah. And what can it do? Oh, Necessity it like that, is the mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, where, where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little, where's well, a niche? Well, here's something. About what? a year ago, I came up with a see-through toaster so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. So I've just been beaten to the post. <laughs> <laughs> Think of computers. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand. Now, for someone to come up with that, you go, this, there must have been some sort of alien involved here. What do you mean? Why do you <laughs> think that? So I love it. So the Frisbee, rubbish, anything too clever, well, it wasn't an invention, it was an alien. So there's nothing between Frisbee and computer chip. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip, where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, yeah. So well, you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? That's great. Because <laughs> I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do, I don't know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you'd go, what are you, you don't do that. Well, that's what genius is, though, But isn't oh, it? there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been yeah. uh, a, a spaceship uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And there's all them rumours, isn't there, in that anger. They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them. Yeah, 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 steering wheel. Yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find the sand. But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that, uh, what am I talking about, sand <laughs> makes computer <laughs> chips, that silicon can have information. Uh, 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 put on it, but we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, that, yeah, but that's na nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature, right? No. It comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are. We're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. We're actually ninety-eight point six percent genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Think of that. We only differ. On 1.4% of well, our that, genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot different. <laughs> I told you, didn't I, about me, my dad's mate who had a who had a monkey and he had to thump it. What? What? One, well, there's two things there. One, why did he have a monkey? Two, what sort of discipline is thumping a monkey? What was the monkey doing? He kept, he was annoying his wife a lot and sort of, you know, pinching her ass and stuff like that. Right, no, right, that's wait, not wait, true. We, we've it's never heard this before. How have we had all these years no, of sure accusers and we've never heard this before? Ago. Your dad had a mate who had a monkey? Yeah, I'm sure I told you. That, well, why did he have a monkey? Just for a laugh? Well, it was back in the day when you, people did. They all had, like, <laughs> odd, in, sort of pets when? Now, didn't they? In, like... About 68. Oh, in 1968, when, oh, when everyone had a monkey. We had to thump it. Now, the weird thing is... Now, that's weird enough. Is this the... This is all the story? This is the entire story? No. You've got all the information you've got is he had a monkey and he had to thump it? Yeah, my dad told me about it. When he found out that I, I was into monkeys, he said, oh, Benny thumped one. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Benny thumped one. Oh, my son's into natural history, particularly uh, Simeon variety. Um, I've got an interesting fact for you, Carl. Sit down. What is it, Peter? Um... Benny thumped one. But, Brilliant. But, but what was mm. interesting is the way that people are thumping other people all the time. No one bats an eyelid. Thump a monkey. People go, you thumped a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes, they do! 
They do yeah. go... You thump to monkey. So that's what's weird, isn't it? But this chimp doesn't want to be caged and kept in a fucking council house in Manchester. No, it was, it was quite happy. And if it, it wants to live happy. like a human... I mean, in the 70s... You know, there were all, all the tea bag adverts and all that, and they were loving that. No, they and weren't people loving it. People interfere. People go, oh, that's unfair. Now they, they're in like a cage in a zoo. You go, they, it was better when I was pushing a piano up a stairs. They weren't really. They weren't really. They weren't actual delivery men. They weren't really sitting down and having a cup of tea. Well, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> a, a, a week in the life of the monkey delivery oh, men. I love that chimps in a zoo now going. Okay, now we at least we were at least we were free. Remember when we used to drive a van? And we're, on, and we're on fifty-eight quid a week. Yeah. They're not meant to be kept in a house in Manchester. Cool to keep a person in a house in Manchester, so it's fucking cool to keep a monkey. <laughs> what do you think of that, Carl? If you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal, what would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything, but you could change into, you know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh, Cockroach. No, I'd have, uh, I'd have like uh, an armadillo's body. Right. Okay. I'd have a uh, head of an owl. Right. The head of an owl. Yeah. Why? 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 Come I mean, Why? What does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So okay. because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works. Yeah. Right? Okay. With a cat and a dog and all that. Mm. Right. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have, uh, I wouldn't have legs, I'd go for like the slug juice. <laughs> what do you mean? So now you're a really slow moving legless armadillo with a head of an owl. Slithering along. How yeah. is that going to be friendly? They'll, be, they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the slug. No, if the head's that nice, that they'll, they'll forgo the, uh, the sludge. But hold on though. But wait a minute. So this got, it's got this thing that's stuck, right? Going at 0.1 miles an hour. With a going, right? You come over, you kick the head off. How is this? No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah, of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into no, a no, ball. This isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's. Oh, Why has it got the slug? Why because is that so attractive? what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is an armadillo. They're good when they're on the feet. Flip them, they get stuck like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff keeps it down. So if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can. Why not a limpet stuff. then? But 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 it oh. can't get any. How, it can barely move. It can just hardly go and, get just anywhere. Go and kick it. What just do you mean just, can't get but anywhere. But how can it escape from danger? It's going to move very slowly. No, what, that's lock, the worst lock animal. Lock itself in. Lock itself in. Yeah, and then I just scoop it up on the. You sand. can't scoop it up. It locks itself in if it's in danger. I give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why has it got peacock feathers? Again, this, it's just... It's, it's just the so worst animal you I've ever heard. Why is it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's does. What well, that's the least do. threatening thing, peacock feathers. It's like Danny LaRue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans. Yeah. But the humans won't be harming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Mm. Uh, they eat lettuce. <laughs> they eat lettuce? <laughs> they eat le Why has it got a beak? They eat lettuce, he's telling him what he's going to eat now. The owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yeah, they it eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that, and then it eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that if that existed. If that was normal, like when you went out to empty your bin, he was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> You wouldn't, you wouldn't even double take. You'd just be like, "Oh, there's the uh, the owl head peacock feathered thing." I don't know why he's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Because that's the only way it can see properly. Because its head's coming out like that. So even though you've designed this animal, now it's you're even <laughs> expanding its, its limitations. Well, it's, 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 it's mainly made as uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> What a useless animal that is! Carl, I mean. But nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that is nature. Okay, now and again, no. you'll get, you'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and so. Oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was, I think. That's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. 
I didn't style it, I didn't do anything with it, and it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair, and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, nonsense, nonsense. absolute well, nonsense. Well, you're saying Absolute that. nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird, then, isn't it? And that's what happens with old people, once they lose their, you know, will to live, once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo, what's it doing? Can't fly, its wings are useless. Eat it, tastes horrible, kill it. <laughs> no, they did Nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I, th I think they over-farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it, but they didn't like it. Everybody, you never you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You're it making this up again. Eaten. All conjecture. No, but they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, it's not for me, that. <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea, you don't you're just making this. it up. What's this based on, I've that just... people... And also, why would that kid it out? Because, I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go, don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd take more care, but what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once it's again, no got use. his information from a glacier mint advert. No, but it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's going to make them stronger. <laughs> What would you do for your doctor? And I came to you and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't... I, the penis, I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it. I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm going to get rid of. I want, I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. <laughs> I know that, everyone knows that, it's just the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them, they're not a great thing, are they? What, <laughs> it's not why we cover them though, is it? It's part of it, I think, I think deep down, I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up, <laughs> even he had a leaf on. No, but listen, right, so... Are you thinking fundamentally, then, that aesthetically, the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's, it's designed that way, because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than... Uh, yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing, isn't it? With, with modern technology... You need, you know, the, the thing is, the testicles have to be outside, because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah. Otherwise, the Satoli cells die, which sort of feed to semen and all that so that, that you know to, to be functioning and sort of like fertile they have to be outside which is annoying because i'd put a little rib cage around them like that I'd, I'd pop a rib cage around those protect them wear a cricket box have that built in so you cannot get a kick in a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel bit, sick but it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, they, they were hidden away right. yeah. so that they were just then you dropped them it's like right we need to cool them down be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on an aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, landing gear down, and the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they a... could detach, and you could pop them in the fridge. Cool yeah. Down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Go on. You say easy. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just. Uh... How do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but... Testerone, eh? <laughs> Testerone? <laughs> Toblerone. I want to, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits. Mm. Like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Supposing I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd... I want them... I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles, yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my arse where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easier to move the head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, when was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they, so been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? 
we were just chatting about um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. Now, I used to love them yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got this year? No, just no, recently. years ago, oh, years, ago like, years ago, when I loved them, I said, I love Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. He met one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No, 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 that's no he, he knew some mate yeah. who uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And uh, he must have got about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. we'd have about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard, under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. Now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? In how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you're yeah, lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just. What just, so just this, sorry, whoa, 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 bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> about. They were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, sat around yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the I've great I've already run out of sorry, responses. Yeah. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no that. Opinion, I mean, that. I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand looked like, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like Tic Tacs, mate. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Yeah. Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him out. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the country place. Oh, do you want some more? No, cause me fucking down. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause me real for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up in an audio book. Well, that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no, no, well, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ! Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? Well, it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity it is the same condensity. Um, condensity. Yes, yeah, so I got rid of them <laughs> like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, <laughs> even though I'd got shot of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> Up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's, it's tinging its way, way up the tube. <laughs> Ding dong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. <laughs> that sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like that man or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be back up, tinging it. Sheila's up. getting married. How to get some confetti? Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. No, it's, it's a the, really little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell that's of a hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when when I your mum and dad uh, the drive, <laughs> yes, yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident! Let's never speak of the Tic Tac incident. <laughs> I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day, I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about selling this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Um. Well, I went for a what's her name, Steve. You don't know. I, I've, I've had uh, problems with my legs. Oh. <sighs> Christ almighty. He's the same, what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk contract. like you're a seven year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week. He goes, now his legs Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. Don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. And he's going, oh, right. Christ no. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30 odd years, I've been working hard. And I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, uh, 33, sorry to start off with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? Well, I just have, I sort of, uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm well, just you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> pissing about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? 
Uh, I was 15. Right, okay, so you've been working for 15 years then, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, right. but I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I? And that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. It all adds <laughs> up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked my height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, eh? Like it's a classic story that everyone should know. Everyone and also like, the phrase "kicking my own height." Yeah. No, Explain so what you mean. Just kick me height when I was when I was. Kick a kid. your No one understands. You kicked Carl. your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I kicked were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go and kick me height. So you were so you're four and a half foot, and you put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right, okay. Right. Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go, get Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> why, why did he you fall over? He tickets, the neighbours were cracking <laughs> up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, 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 you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have kick me eye. I mean, my leg got eye up, but I was that chuffed that I got that eye. I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> <laughs> what did it look like? What the fuck did that look like? He's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, no. You, you stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ but you almighty. Didn't think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I've got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like I hit the salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back. Yeah. And, uh, and I did some damage, I think. Yeah. And it's because Definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like all like all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done because when you get older, I mean, it was the kidney stone thing. Once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, got to start looking after Do you your think body. You die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for fifteen years. <laughs> well, you just... think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then, I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You know, does anyone listen you to always who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella, to uh, like a professional uh, leg rubber. A um, professional leg rubber, yeah. And he's, uh, he, he sort of said uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of like, podcasts i said am i in charge of my brain or is my brain in charge of me yes yeah, remember what i said it's the most stupid thing you've ever said yeah well we'll listen to this then so oh. i go and see this leg rubber professional leg rubber yeah right and he is professional yeah right remember so he... leg rubber you haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation He's a leg rubber. So, so this this whatever however profound this is it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing not just leg, does he, he do back, left and right or back, back rubbing as well he does it all right right, right. so i'm in there rubber. and i didn't mention about how i thought my brain was you know was in charge of me and stuff uh I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, oh, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well. And your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was this another laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that. On oh, the okay. oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got uh, towels under his pants. Yeah, bras. Yeah, halfway through, he said, "You've got twenty p. I'll be for the dryer." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm lying there and he lifts the leg up yeah. and I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, your, your outside of the body is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. <laughs> he does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body is yeah. longer than the inside. Of <laughs> so he, he, he had me lying on my front and what have you and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he was going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid this as well. Mm. Mm. Put me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that. So, mm. you know, that, that's that. He went off. Oh, <laughs> <the fuck up." laughs> he probably said that. He said that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. A lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional is a, is rubber? Or? Is, a, is a doctor. He's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you... got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice and soft. He said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. 
It's so because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Yeah. We're living in a stressful world, as I told you about. So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person who's, a who's gullible enough to spend 46 quid for this oh, hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them rather than them being in charge of the So, brain. all you did was you met a person as stupid as you? <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like 15, No, he saw a right fucking sucker coming. <laughs> no, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, don't, the reason... Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well, I am doing, I've got locked into it, I've got to go at least another three times. Why? And try to get out of it. I don't know, I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait. Well, what's the wisdom he's going to come up with next week? That would be brilliant. I will kind of, yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is, blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking... You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. Do you know, like, how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, <laughs> uh, he said, the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus. Right? He said, mm. uh, so what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh Close your eyes and see... Instead of just leaving them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? <laughs> Okay. He said, I'm just thinking about <laughs> no, nothing else. He, I said, He's a witch! <laughs> did he, did, did he even say you didn't put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so, what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes and, and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So, I was lying there. It just wasn't working because... Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was... You were, even though you were thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next it day, someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> You were still oh, using your face, even though it was What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking <laughs> down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids <laughs> at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm going to die. I am going to die. Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh... When were you born? 72. What, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Uh um, You can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> because oh they, 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 they oh, pinpoint they things. The, all the tic tacs they never yeah. even. Yeah, do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> uh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No. Because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> My mum and dad don't even remember so, me then. And, and it's oh, weird. I remember, uh, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't no, remember no, that, no, were you? No, no, you, you, you weren't there. there. What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember well, having you one know, of those. I'm not suggesting you have the you same used memory. You used to go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, okay, um, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking tic tacs? <laughs> no, I we lost our truck for you. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window, and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But more, I don't understand. Why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they were glued? Wait, wait, but 
<laughs> Why did you say, Mum, Dad, I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just <laughs> you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all it... But when they came in and you could sense them looking at I didn't know they were there. <laughs> Remember that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am and yeah. I couldn't concentrate? <laughs> Think of that! Think of that! I called him! Oh my god, what are you doing? I don't know where I am! What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I what, went in London, wandering. you got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went wandering and then, uh, you know... It's when like... he first moved into his new place. He was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place and he didn't know where he was. He tried How can to you ever really get lost in London, though? I'm just... It's um, cabby. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because I feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate that, do they? But um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said okay. that's much better. Yeah, yeah, it was a cold day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Go on, uh, go on. Uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay. And the time? the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, my mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean... Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got news story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it, think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> to fly. Yeah, I've done oh, it over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when Suzanne does it. She never indulges no, in it. No, it scares her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. It's been the horses regular for ages, but there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> oh God. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. Gosh, oh, Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. is such a noisy world though, isn't it? It is. Well, London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, I mean, it's tiny. You've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so there's no, no space for that. Art. There's no, no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's, where's, the, where's the sofa? At home? Yeah. Facing the mirror. 
So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night? Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting? Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. He does the picture. No, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable every fucking day. No, no, honestly, it's it's good to because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything, so I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself. No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up. And if Suzanne's sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> So, why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you don't, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward. I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Look no, back at you we're in used the to it. That's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room. In a way. It's like, <laughs> and they're further away. There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use... It doesn't matter. Your Sorry, eyes, remember, why wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, you know, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. <laughs> Stephen Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> so I can look forward, she's sat next to me. If, if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now, she's getting the sound from me still because she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away, but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> So that's how you managed to you keep are, this relationship alive. You are yeah, just, you're such an odd little man. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on, on the estate who, who did use... Uh, have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. I'm going to tell you ages ago, it's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three-wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's... bike? Pedal bike? Yeah, like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> Cycled out. Like yeah. She was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway. <laughs> oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always go in quick save and nick biscuits. And if anyone went up to her to say stop nicking the biscuits, she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag and she'd look in it but talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> What, what, what? This so she's insane. She up, it's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like, it used to scare yeah. me. It's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. It's really, really so, weird. So hang on, so she used to talk to people through the mirror, because she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No. That's weird. No, that would Why? be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. Oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, it, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are it gives you confidence? Of, well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more and you pick up what habits you do and stuff like that. So what have you changed through your view uh, of yourself? I, I, I sort of grew, grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> Is. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it, or they try and destroy it? Uh, do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> If you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I disagree with that because um, I think um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could, and I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Shinder's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving. Couldn't you? Schindler's List in space. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Piggy's Choice. Well, we talked about that. What? About things like that in in art as well. Do you think that that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, like 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 films do, things like the Holocaust and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, 
lives and dies. Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. Well, which one did she pick? I, th I, don't, I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is, this is like deal no deal. It's kind of you down to the last down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you gonna go for? Oh god. <laughs> but why did you ask which one did she choose? Because <laughs> even if he'd said the names, Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it? No, because that you've then said I'd ask more, I'd ask more then. If if he said Alison, I'd go, well, what was it with Alison? That what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do, you question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, what was going on there? Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ. That's because you've just watched Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah? Brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> One extraordinary on, point. On, gonna, this is gonna be, he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something up. here, he's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then, what's your no, take on films? Films, films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. And, uh... You like one with a good story? I like, I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm. Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> Mission, Impossible <laughs> Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> These are your, these are the, what you consider the great works no, of film I'm just film saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed, enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen, yet you always say, oh, have you seen so-and-so? Well, Mission it. Impossible 1. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you, three's out. <laughs> That's true. Which is another important value of art, of course, people's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> you whistle. Uh, yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, uh, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? So right, freedom. expand on this point if you would. Well, that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. That's great, that. For art is freedom. I yeah. love that because I think, I think you've really hit on something there. Would you would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? And well, I know, what you, well, meant, I know you, what you meant there. Would you I include mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to, I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, how, what, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So Got just take us off. through a See, day. Uh, when would the whistling begin? So, so uh, this was that you spent you spent <coughs> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking I'm in my own place now. I'm going to annoy them. Well, it was mainly it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble, mm. and they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> Um, you got boiler problems down in Kent got, as it, well. work, it works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going mm. from one thing to another. A wedley? And a, a man was impressed, she was like, oh, you can whistle, can't you? I was going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you go? I was just doing all different levels. So it, this sounds like a scene from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The boy is setting off the radio. I can whistle. Oh, you're good whistling, aren't you? Oh, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home it when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up. You whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a Well, whistle. the people who aren't whistling are usually pissed off. But yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least, he, he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants the bunch is facing. Same with whistling. Which there's, there's, with there's, there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's I, not. I don't know. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh. Retired. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he couldn't whistle. That was it. It was like, well, yeah, he whistled whistle. all the time. Can't whistle, well, yeah. can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic.
Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth. Yeah, I suppose he could have done. He didn't think of that. What about a flute? Or a recorder? Not London's burning again. <laughs> Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off. <laughs> he didn't really think this through, did he? He retired at the age of 28. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family were bankrupt. <laughs> with no teeth. Yeah. And just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why are you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No. I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. <laughs> what, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? About two hours. Two Fuck hours? Put me word down. And this, sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it. Can we hear it? So you were, whistling, is... you were whistling after you had your go as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. <laughs> that is Carl's... Self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, because I do all right. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can come oh, up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't, no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that I, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree, cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth telling that. It's not bad, is it? Now, I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you, I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out? And then, yeah, when it wasn't I go, just... <laughs> oh, God! Christ, <laughs> Anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby, maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here, but I think there's a difference between Beethoven and <laughs> Squirm. <laughs> there's a cue in that. <laughs> Robert Nozick did this thing that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible you did exactly what you've always wanted you became the person you wanted to be you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference so it was your life okay and you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have you could pre-program it would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you will have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying. So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. Am I having them, or are they imaginary? They're imaginary, but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank, uh, and your one proviso was, are munchies as good? <laughs> yeah. No, Absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basics, You've got yeah. to pre-program your life. That's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just, if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them. You are the... You're the... It's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're living it. That. Bit Sorry? Dangerous. Bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, why? Just, um... I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes okay. you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in, because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't, you're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. You just have munchies every day and... 
Well, yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you, if you don't know you've got in this tank, if I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. Right. Well, you're meant to be at work. She goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Goes, All right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that. Well, I was a bit suspicious, though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, really. it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like, but I like the fact now you're even questioning you're not in the tank, and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that, because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example... You wake up, there's the munch, it's sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Oh, she goes to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, got up some munches for oh, breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't, you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti, yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet. I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right? Okay. So anticipation. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it? Then looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay, well, right. can I ask a question because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea, okay? You can design your perfect life. But I prefer not to well, know I'm doing it. No, you, you won't, won't know. Won't. But you I want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munches. What else? We've got, got munches and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, d I, d I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, just, I just think you need you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British Gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Bilkinson, yes, the, the, <laughs> oh my God! the so boiler is fixed." Like so his boiler's fixed. No, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but you it gets don't, fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler. You could be the perfect temperature. But this isn't the the anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But you to won't realise. It won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got no, a problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I fixed your boiler. Sorry, can I just ask No, one? let him let speak. Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for... You, no, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole, is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yeah. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on. Right. So it's better to have... You've got a problem hole in your head. Right. Yeah. So you stuff in a problem problems. into the problem hole. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Now all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. <laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? But that's not true, is The problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky! Let him uh, explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say his problems... Uh, not even problems. Well, how big is his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> <laughs> right, but why... Shut what, up! Let what, him speak. But, but, he's but, just but, expanding on his idea. Why but do what you is his problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little Skittles? Loads of problems. You, you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing <laughs> loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter.
like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. It is. And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a bo- it's got a gene, a ball and a hole. So the problem there's, ball... No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me ask, I want to clarify this. The problem ball exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem ball, <laughs> down the problem tube, into and the bounce, problem gene. Into the problem gene. Into, right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just... What? Can ladies have prob- a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, uh, c- could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls? Is my question to you. But and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you right. could have you could you, have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you went, it. If you, okay, don't so, suppose I came to you and said, listen. Um, well, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country he might have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd hole, and the doctor said, "Well, let me see it," and I, you know, he said, well, "Let me see your problem hole," and he, and 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 hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first? Is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, "Right, he'd say, right, take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right? I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly." But he would fish. He would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem. He ball, would, wouldn't he? Well, well, he'd, well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger in the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay, so, so Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it, it's after. It's like that holiday, when I was on holiday. What do you mean? You don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it, it's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say like the holiday, I've just So you enjoy coming off holiday? What? I want to hear it. You you enjoy the holiday, you didn't enjoy the holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, There was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is there stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now, you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it, because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah. I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. wonder how much to give you, because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now, I have the lamb chops, it comes with extra veg. I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed... You can only so get packed so much... Enjoy- if you're enjoying all, all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you but you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and then it's, it's yeah, ruined. What's, I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had, a, a, like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought, I fancy a couple of them. Yeah. And, and, then it, and the chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant now. Yeah, but you missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's What's not the like problem? you didn't... I had a spicy sausage. In the <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, the, th- the problem was, Go I on. was enjoying it, but I thought, this is this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day night when I knew that it's gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So, <laughs> oh, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! <laughs> but then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma uh, the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying but the, the lovely spiciness and the sausageness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you... Go on. Auntie Nora, I've told you she prepares all her food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, now, she, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks, I got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. 
I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? I don't know. Just want the same. She was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. it's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you never Someone know says, one. well, it depends. So do you have anything twice ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl, because insane. aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that that shows not you only what, it's actually on Monday, yeah. what you're going to do on Thursday as well. Make, I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> food diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life now. <laughs> exactly. To go, right, oh, fucking hell. But, now, what what else you say but then he's phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's too cool. Unbelievable. That well, it's just just read her journal. Now, the question is, is it better to enjoy something once and not again, then not at all. But you're an what idiot because you you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby, ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing. I did the boxing. I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm. Oh, that is it. I think that's what but, it. but but that's what I'm saying. Though. I soon get bored, and that's it's like how you enjoy. You know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than. Well, that doesn't make sense. That goes c totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first one's really so your favourite. No, so hold on. Not. So if you do have one munchie, I'll go as a munchie, mate. You no. go. I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, but what is... Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one, and I'm, I'm going to get a taste for them, and I'll, I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? Oh, keep want... them, then. Forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I'd prefer, I'd prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you, <laughs> enjoy, the okay, why do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the first one. curry, but not the second curry. But you know curry. it's the last one. Because it's... No, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about 12 in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> <laughs> you shove the first four in! Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm eating. Yeah. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. You but hold on, what, every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. It? Yeah. So, hold on, though, you must enjoy... A packet of munchies regularly, then? Not as often as you think. You well, I don't know. <laughs> well, as often as I think, I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after a sort of maybe once a month. So every month you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies. And the same experience. You, you like, like the, the first end. one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munchies once a month. Fuck me. <laughs> What do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just, tr just from my own experience, working for someone does feel better. Because you've got, a, you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah. I genuinely believe that. But you need, you need the mixture, don't you? So you, so you find out what, you, what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't, you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus no, but, but it is, isn't it? There's, there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. With, with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now, what no, I'm saying metaphorically, is... Metaphorically, what, what's the... Like, yeah, well, I'm, actually I'm using... Actually named what Revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well, I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on, then. But the Revel like is raisins? there. Go on. Well, well, maybe, if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? Uh, when I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted, did they? But what would you have requested? So I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most of oh, the kids were. God.
Oh, it's exhausting. Like whistling. They brought out it's Roger Whittaker. <laughs> yes, because they look at it. They go, can you fix it for me to go into space? No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah, so that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in. Because whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One though. thing. Just nice. one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell! It's not unbelievable! <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. There's no, there is no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. that doesn't work either, because, like, then... Well, I told, not, because I told, okay. me, I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> when I was on holiday recently, yeah. I got talking to an old fella. Because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm -hmm. um, I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had um, that sort of um, rouge coloured sort of jeans oh yeah which is always sort tell, of tell sign it's, it's kind of like he's got money yeah and um the uh, red jeans are twice as much there that's okay i've got money yeah it's sort of it's either that color or yellow but you yeah. can carry it off when you're an old man and especially with the tan you think yeah he's got a few uh, I'm, a, I'm a millionaire do you have any yellow jeans uh we've got one pair sir but they're the most expensive yeah they're, they're in the back room um uh, can i just see your your bank account first there is oh yeah you can afford yellow jeans right sir come this way so I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now, I was chatting to him for about ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Mm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes, that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell, because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive guy? He's a good-looking fella. Uh, so he's rich, so you saw this rich, good looking bloke with just a shirt on. Oh, he had a shirt and his, his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants, and he okay. just went over and struck up a conversation. I don't know, why did you notice his, what um, colour the crotch area was? What? Why did you notice what you colour were looking the, at the, I, I the crotch area? I can see why you can see, if you're looking at his face, you can see a white shirt, but why, why could you see you what colour what the you. fabric around his this testicles were? You saw a good looking old man sat at the bar, you went out and bought him a drink. Yeah, you oh, saw, I was you waiting for the barbecue to open. Right. Okay, and you noticed a man's trousers. So you <laughs> noticed a man's trousers. In the morning. No. Yeah, no. I was annoyed. I right. don't like late nights on holiday. Right. Okay. With jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40 odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at 8. Well, so you're noticing people, you're minutes. noticing old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but get what your I'm story saying, straight. What I'm saying to you is the right. reason I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about, right. there was no reference point, so I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. He what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, yeah. is, is reference points. I had no idea and what, what was he was going talking on about. When you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it above the waist? Keep it. Uh, Looking at his bollocks. Keep it erect. <laughs> oh, was I made Carl laugh. <laughs> Now, everyone knows, over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project, it hasn't been my own career, it's been Get Carl Famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald-headed mank twat. Well, well want... let me tell you now, Rick, I've well, been out and about and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkington got a head like a fucking orange. Well, I've and I've been... had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But, he's had a call. He had a call recently 
from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and um, had a meeting. And uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action, <laughs> thriller, whatever? Because uh, you can provide any of it. I love that, that he's playing it cool, yeah, like yeah. you've come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilk, the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That was my um, No, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, don't yeah. they? Just, just so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when if you just randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, that. That, that to me, is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right, it doesn't work the same. Just, just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking. And eventually, it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, uh, so to anyway. Aristotle, he said, "Sit down. I've got an idea for you." Uh, Aristotle said, "Plato, I'd want you to go right. Just keep talking, and eventually, your brain will come out with stuff." <laughs> so what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more. It's building. Right. Okay, so who's you say? Who'd you say? So I said, "Right, I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren." <laughs> <laughs> Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, all right. Did they look at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? We, uh, he, he must said, be amazing. Yeah, he's got Clive Warren. Get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's Get Clive me Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca De Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They'd never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca De Mornay. But hang on a minute, you could have, you could have any <laughs> film star. This is your fantasy <laughs> casting, <laughs> and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for 10 years. Oh, God! Why didn't oh, you choose, you know, a... Uh, someone who existed. Jayla or someone who's a oh, big star. Oh, God! Clive <laughs> Warren! <laughs> oh, God! Oh, so God. anyway, starts off... And the people, you know, you're seeing into their lives from yeah. like the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. You know, they're going about the day. They're having the breakfast. They're saying, "Oh, what we're we doing tonight?" And you're thinking, "Oh, they've got a nice life." Mm. She, she's like, "Love you and all that." Yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's they're dead. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't doesn't... got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't. If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Carry on, so he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yes. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's Warren. fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, doctor says... Clive's dead. Who's playing the Doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of, uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the 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 old the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, "Your husband's dead." She's like, "Oh God." What happens then is he says, "But listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out." Right. Right. And 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 a fact that I'd read that day. Before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read a fact. thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain it on myself. half. So, this is, this was in my mind still. Well, half your mind, yeah. So, I said, what happens is, Morgan Freeman says, been working on this, you can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you oh, think Oh, he's, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but Wait. yeah, he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. So, no, he's gone. No, no, You're no. hit by a bus. Yeah, he's, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, uh, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, 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 they're in a coma. No, they're, they're in a dead. coma. No, they come out of comas, don't All right, they? then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. So, change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on, though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely going to die in this coma. Take the brain out now. 
pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. like, if anything happens to me... No, 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 there's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. <laughs> right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive. And it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you cord. can link it up to the eyes and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going, well, we're going to try and do a brain like Carl. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> then what happens is they say do you want half of his brain in your head half she's his brain she in said her head. she says definitely not i'm having you struck off she starts screaming she calls the police he gets arrested yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff <laughs> yeah but he's only in a coma yeah no but he's not going to come out of that coma right. so so it's like this or nothing it's right. like look you know what what we're going to do here we can either turn the switch off yeah. or we can put his head in your head but why would but you so, why, so what he does so what they do then they're going to take half his brain half of his brain take out it, half of hers pop it in place why would she do that because she loves him but hold on well no no wait 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 what would she then be because this is what i'm trying to tell okay, you okay okay sorry what happens is he, he explains all this so i mean this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film but i'm just rushing i, you, I just rushing switched off now. but yeah no you wasn't this this bit would have you mm. so what well what, i'd have actually left when i i wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, clive warren and rebecca de mornay <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And uh, he goes, well, what will happen is he's gone, but you'll you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, will he have cornflakes? His bit of the brain will sort of say... Have a wheat a bit. Have shredded wheat. Yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, good idea. Sorry. Sorry. So the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought... What do you mean, yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Oh, wait a minute, this is only act that's, one. That's just the first bit. Everything's going well. She so, has it done. So what is... What, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Namore. Yeah. But, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is it's all going well at the beginning. She's... So she can't decide what to wear. So, so where, she's, got, he, so she's had is. half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. OK? And, and Clive Warren's uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round... Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, writing his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters, because... Yes. Otherwise, yes, it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the I mean, point of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. And Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's." Right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me, sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I just thought about, or whatever." I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But Carl, like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If When when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, uh, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I can also I... categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you love and that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! Uh, and you... I go, no! It's madness! I don't think you It's wait. madness! All right, all right, all right. Let's... So, tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. Yeah, <laughs> that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, can we do lunch? 
Um, they may be like at the funeral because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave, and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, "Why is she laughing?" Yeah, and she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, "Look at her head." Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's like Stuff on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> a little cameo for you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, oh, it's quite funny, this. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah. you hit them hard. <laughs> it's the most, oh, it is the most ludicrous idea for a film I've ever heard. Oh, it's, oh, the, but... it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental case. Say, though, right. I have to say, though, I am hooked now. Mm. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is <laughs> she. Here's the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> he's going, oh. So he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip. I've here. let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. So. He's, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing. So she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know... Where are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got... She's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie or it's is it another a woman. Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone, what would happen sort is? of happen <laughs> is... Oh, yeah, because we, we don't want to ruin it for them, because this, <laughs> yeah. this will be filling the multiplexes in no time. Yeah. No, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in the head. But listen, let's I just get Hang to on a second, though, Carl. I don't... Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening on. Come on, hanging and waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right, so what I said was, maybe, what happens is, his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right, how it, is, now, what, how is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's his taking brain, over. that gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay, yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he overpowers her, so she is now a lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think? Hold on. Why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's re relationships. It's the love of two brains. Right, okay, again, can that's anyone out there, line. can we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about Cooked. Eve likes I love food cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, wait a minute, Clive Warren on this food <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm I mean going to turn into a lesbian. People, Shredded wheat. People like what they like. And it's Ooh. the same way, like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman and then is found out that she's got a twin sister and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that... When a cat dies, you buy another one. <laughs> it's the same thing. You want that same. Yeah, but love you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Is there, is there, has there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Go well. I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs. Now I like cock. This is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't. <laughs> I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was all a bit of a nightmare, because I was going with my mate, and uh, he said he knew someone who knew, knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, we had a bit of land in the garden. What's the point, though, innit? You know, what's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of, like, a spa down the road and, like, a pub? No, because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have getting for like, when they have all, parties yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land... Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. 
So now you're stuck in the middle of a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. What, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of clipping on the beach. But, uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. So we oh, thought, nice. that's the place to go. Oh, yeah. No, well, municipal that, tip. What was it? Was it? Was it chemical waste or just like you know, no, just, um, coke just cans syringes and, stuff. and oh, uh, lovely. But listen, though, you've got to think true. about that. Rusty, if, what's something rusty? If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like it's a way. That's like a little tip of. So you um, could have slept in a thing, public lavatory. Yeah. Yeah. This one's nice. What is covered in shit? <laughs> Means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five-star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> so that's that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there, and then so what was annoying is he puts down the tent. <laughs> we uh, we what's the name? We uh, it was already up. It, it was carried already it all up. the they way carried it all the way there. And they wanted to pack it down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was. Soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, they saw the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday makers, they uh, uh, they started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near. Look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah, near, near the nappies. And um, they offered us some sausages. All oh, right. My mates said, "Oh, ignore them. That's like code for uh, swingers." What? <laughs> oh! What? So, so there were some people cooking some sausages. <laughs> yeah. Saying, "Would you like a sausages? We've made too much." And you it's said, just no, that's cool for talk to strangers. It's like we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone, you know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And then so, uh, so you know but, it. but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about 45. Who are they, that? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? No, I mean, you, you say, right, I want the bold one, look. <laughs> if it's like wife swapping, should, <laughs> well, should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't. I don't know all the rules and that. But uh, he's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of. I said, don't believe sausages is a code, is a code for swingers because <laughs> eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, "Well, get your pants off." And they go, "Well, we just have some sausages." They go, oh, "This isn't working. This code." But why we need would a be, code. Why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah, makes you wonder. We don't. Let's not trust these people. Let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. September 30th, going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh, yeah. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, Okay, so if somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got you've got him for one day. What would you do with this? What would you What would you make him do? What would you uh, What conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say I'm not bothered, and that'd be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he does he think the same way? Look the same way? Exactly dresses? the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> Because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? incredible. No, because... That is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But think about it. This other person's going, all right, thanks for uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you start doubting yourself and you go, should I be leaving? Or so how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because you're yeah, but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it's a bit weird. But you know the you truth, know? you idiot. Because how would I know which one I was? So anyway, but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass I... him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks? Would you, uh, you know, 
You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was me doppelganger. <laughs> it can only... I wouldn't want it, to be honest. It's a... It, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you go, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because hmm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> It's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was, we, like, that was like experiencing what it would be like there was two cars. <laughs> yeah. He was we, a discussion with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? <laughs> does this mean... <laughs> does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on... Yes. And any, any, when, he, when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no, no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger then, Well, you're identical twins then. You found out identical twins and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little, again... But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's, it's alright when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just got their ass stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, oh. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. All right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, yeah. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's this a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. anywhere near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling really he's trying to make me make a mistake isn't he well he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question if you ask him so what's the point in asking a question do i know one of them's gonna lie yeah but would they be neighbors like this would they be that close <laughs> why <laughs> <sighs> i mean we're not sure if these two guys get on it's logical well i'll tell you the answer no no, no no i want to see if he can get it he's almost there uh no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So no, hang on. Right, so you go up and you yeah. go. Um, you right, go hang on. Well, look, let's let's imagine that. Let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right. But we have to. Um, uh, uh, well, well, me and me and Steve would decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm. Uh, look, look away, Carl. Okay. Right, then. So we've decided, okay? One of us is guarding hell, and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question? you're going to ask and who you're going to ask it to. Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, 
Uh, got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some post for God here. No, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe uh, the question's uh, coming. I got, you got some post for God here, yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish, is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just. Uh... Well, no, you've only got one question. So you're, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. Eh? <laughs> um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, cut, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what drives... <laughs> As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what's he been doing with that mirror and that? But that, that was... <laughs> what? No, just, you so, know. Just, what? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, just been, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do you mean? in what, what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? what? Whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their no, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're not in the phone as well. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is what, why, well, but, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your... I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I tried, I was going to take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. You know, it could crack and... Because it's the size it. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it took up a whole wall. Right. right, so like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't set that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know and what have you. But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because I've put a nail in. And it. what don't you understand about art? What about art? Don't you understand the concept, specifics? No, so, I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but don't invent cameras then, one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. Was it a Dali, going <laughs> melting <laughs> clocks and stuff? No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. No. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, yeah. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. e they were eating. That's a good hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters. And uh, yeah, 
they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And uh, that's Andy. I don't know the other artist, whoever it was, sort Ever of phone? started saying, "Oh, you and your clocks and all that." Right. Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed it on the phone. bounced off his mate's head, went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. <laughs> Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know. Well, Suzanne wiped, liked some art. Just like uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right. Stop looking at the walls. Look out the window. <laughs> My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why just he... everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat and it What do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no, it's good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it. Because every time I go around there, it comes straight from the coolies. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one it's one. a salamander, well, so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it for, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this one. Do you, know, do you know what gets me, though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, so he's just sat there. Like, and the, it was thinking exactly the same <laughs> fucking thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's it's food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards. <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, isn't it? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why why have we got to see something that that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is, why, at what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of x-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, big, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're they excited sit, they, about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd-looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a housefly wearing 
Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Can I can I take over? Oh, hang on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got there's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses, yeah, yeah so that it can see better, yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we're, we're looking after everything now. Aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right, I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, of a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on, right? Yeah. right? It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had, as an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses someone to put on a house. They put it on there and they've taken a picture of it and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. What, what do you think of that, though? But they well, did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When no. you, you know, We are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll be um, the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say like if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before. Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal. That's sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a, a dog, dog. <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, I just, fish I, to I'll dog. I don't understand it. Maybe. What do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the. <laughs> The water, I imagine, and then got streamlined, and it—I I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have like you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. I don't know. What, this I, is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between a fish and a dog. Problem, wouldn't it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at it on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other. So they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? And he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. It's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they did have no, what, 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 like, what doctor's doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and... No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take... Uh, they don't... Doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we've Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, if, you this. Paid, if you sign this, you can give my consent. <sighs> but, but we, you know, it isn't. Oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just they do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it. And, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like... Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, uh, to make them look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. 
Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of, there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like this. Right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle. Right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, that's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've, I assume they, they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, t t near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. <laughs> I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke, he had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on, um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was, he was fed up because he loved his meat and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that, all he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So, she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it, he's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. <laughs> what? No, it's some, I know, it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was Don't... growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of, it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> it was sort of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from it's from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't are you allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there, so it's actually sitting there and throwing, why, I'll tell you what I'd have done, if I'd have had some cancer in my throat, I'd go, <coughs> there you go, rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, he <coughs> choked to death on this thing and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't have given him the meat after all. Just That's a bollock story. You, it's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio Three competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> <laughs> Conga! Get out, you Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two popper doms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said one more than one. He understood. When we picked up the food and took it home, there were five popper doms in the bag. <laughs> oh God! Oh, oh, oh God! There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. <laughs>
No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he <laughs> That's did. a hell of a phone yeah, call Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. What, what do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? Um, I don't know because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't wouldn't be good. But but they sort of do they do something. There's something about if you did get rid of them all. It would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not not everything though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no, it's it's ninety seven percent water or something. Yeah. So how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water. <laughs> oh God. Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the... who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> underground not like a mole do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night my mate went to visit him and he said it's all it had been raining really heavily and that and it's all the rain's running what in. do you mean he went to visit him he went down here what's that that's an hole in the ground yeah come in he, come just, he just said oh come come downstairs and he's, he's living underground what do you mean he's living he, he, underground he's happy down there he said it was really muddy and what have you he said he won't be going back to visit him i believe this though i believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole <laughs> that doesn't shock me. That's to that's you spent to far too long with him. If that now you're just happy to accept, I totally accept that. I I'd be surprised if I walked round where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died. His dad said, "Let's throw it on the fire." I mean, his mum. What did your mum do? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock. Getting a feather off the dead bud, you sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a but man living in a hole is not, not that bizarre. Right, carry on. Watched a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. do, do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the Congo. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was around at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh... Uh, there are bees. They love a drink, um, and uh, they can they can just they they will uh, drink pure alcohol. They love getting off it, and they fall down and they're drunk, right? But some bees get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction. Like ten percent of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol. They take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed, and they've got guard bees, and they go, "Come on, we've all had a drink." Bounces. Yeah. They sort of are, right? And they push them away, and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good idea. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face 
but I, I knew that he was thinking of that B with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh, let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this, is the, this is that thing that goes around that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly. Okay, it's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky, going, "Oh, what are we doing?" Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence and that. At the moment, nobody's saying. There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? Well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, it looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't do. Try and do. catch it out. Oh, no, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. Couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's that's mainly sticking in the, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I, I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour. They're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen, change the colour of co concrete. Yeah. Whereas... Or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> I love this! Public information for <laughs> chameleons! Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh, God! Stay green, stay in the woods, oh. stay safe. Good night. Oh, God. Um, right. <laughs> uh... The only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give... What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think it should be killing, uh, I reckon, ten. Ten, because... You've made your point with ten, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got a thousand in his lifetime, like he's got a thousand to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think... He doesn't really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. But I just think if it needs that sort of power... power. It should be fighting evil? Well, it's not... <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it, how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? I don't know <laughs> if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, 
and then then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did Something that. went, an onion. Was yeah, it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I was no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand? The brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain. <laughs> When I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away, put in my coat on, ready to go. Ready to go and get the yeah, rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear from then nowhere. Then it was just like, it was onion. like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. And suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So you what I'm saying is, but who's, in, the, who's in charge? The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing? But who's in that's charge? That's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and then you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where... Like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it. Oh, the, the you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain... Your... How does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes... Do you mean well, you give it information? Well, it's if, I, it, if I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that then, there's two yous. It's this thing that there's... There's, there's Carl this... and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's, not, there's not a duality in this. If you, if, if you go, if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's, it, it's not, there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are, you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> not your own. I'm not being funny though, so if you have a body transplant, right? And you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked. You look down. Yeah. Lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body? Yeah. No, because th they're not my hands either. <laughs> <laughs> you're a genius! You're a fucking genius! So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's Diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Walked through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> that's so true. That's really true. If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the, what, what, what happened to the cat then? It, it, it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh, and no. it was just walking around bumping into stuff. But, I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But... Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can have, have its eyes sorted out. But it... W I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> 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 it's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. 
A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> That's not the that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit. He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit. The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way this is scientifically possible. What's what? his want? Yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall have you seen this man what man if you see him tell us <laughs> you're talking shit spoke to ricky about trips to the moon oh. he was up for going just to see what the world looks like i came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back he had a few questions but <laughs> but i had the answers yeah he changed the subject i won right my first question was how would you get it up there he said bit by bit That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. And if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early at Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, a present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice, quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once <laughs> in your company. They always say when you get someone a present you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> <laughs> We've been away filming in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been hot, right? It's been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing, though? Getting to see the place, having loads of walks, and I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people Like a dog. <laughs> yeah! When, when he jumps off the couch and <laughs> exactly. starts scratching against the door. Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> it's, it's, walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk. You've got no other clutter going on around you. And right. you just think about a lot of stuff. And you know, like like say with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so, so while we've been filming, you've been watching insects? Yeah, just seeing, because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Why, what are they up to? What are you worried <laughs> about? Loads Steve, you wouldn't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them, because <laughs> they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh. I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack? Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened, I'd, I'd been... Did it the... clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd Were saw... there some other little bee paramedics? No, no, I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at, you know, uh, caterpillars knocking about. Uh, butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of so when, so when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day. I want you to do some constructive stuff. <laughs> but but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than, like, most of the time. And I come out of the park, just crossing, like, a, a sort of a busy road and what have you, and I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air, and it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that. And, um... It just fell. It fell from the air in front of me, and it was on the pavement. I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still. Gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement. Nothing. Stone sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. <laughs> yeah! Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. <laughs> My right. god, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh. 
No, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks, stress. <laughs> you put it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... I'm always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee. Uh, so what did you, it fell to the floor and you, you instantly, you just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it? No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was nothing, and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already. It's just... Rigor mortis had set in. set in. So it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. Well, when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, it's Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching Ants. You mentioned Ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you say it like it was a garden day. party. <laughs> yeah, well, but but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. Because right. if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one... <laughs> If you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards, and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it for. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? It hasn't got eyes, has it? You just look at it, and it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't... Th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> That's a rule, if we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> ah. You know, when, when you see them in films, they're, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one that's on the... It, it, was, it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, mm. there's uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Mm. Uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm... I, mm. So, in a way, it's good knowledge because... I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that. But that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gozzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> Conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. Okay, Carl, I'm just gonna throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it. Okay? A crab. How would it change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, it suits him. Okay, um, good. Would it, would it change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. So but, why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. <laughs> so they're clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yeah, they're still here. They're still doing that. They're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on Earth? Yeah. Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes. <laughs>
If, if a jelly, honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. Mm. But like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like because they've got eyes. You can make eye-to-eye -eye contact with them. <laughs> what a jellyfish. Making? What are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> You can see see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? They say don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row, and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man. Here's a woman. Here's a dog. Here's a cat. Here's an octopus, here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Say if, if everything was at the same size as us, what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula. Yeah. And a tiger, what would happen there? So a, a 15 stone tiger versus a 15 stone tarantula. Yeah. Well, I imagine the 15 stone tarantula. Right, so it's just weird that, innit? It's a good job that they're small. Yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? 15 stone. The biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or something like that. It's big though, isn't it? Yeah, and that's about as big as they get. He's so I wouldn't kill worry that. about it. Mm. <laughs> Again. Based on nothing, he queries it's not, you. But it's like fish, isn't it? How they say about a goldfish. Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and mm. stuck it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well known thing about No, it's not a well known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish would only grow to its surroundings anyway. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back on holiday. Don't talk shit. It's what well was it known. eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she went to Mars and that. Ted, you're not going to believe this. Come up here. Well, how many fish do you see that have naturally died? It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? Well, most things that like don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a... You know, it's a jungle out there. No, worse than the sea. The sea is like full of... Uh, you've got an enemy round every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love it! I love it. It's like a wall into crabs. <laughs> exactly. And young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you ever seen the programme Inside the Actors' Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions, which is based on a French series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to, uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions, just interesting to see what your response is. And, you know, answer them quickly. You don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite curse word? Uh. I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's... But you, you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Well, yeah. knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she'll, she'll, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing, you were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it starts spitting at you. Poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? Well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, knobhead. I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> you kick it and call it a knobhead <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh, God. Oh, I'd go, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm not you, bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'll just spit at you again. I'm not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face is Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> Thank you.
That jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It is like what a child would do. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, so we shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, insects. you must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you, you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them, because we've, we're a bit insect heavy. But, at the end of the day, if we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer, I just think they, they do. You that haven't right. studied them. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off and go, don't you think people, the insects are doing stuff? They're not. It yeah, goes there, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. These snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words! Ooh. Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> There's no headlines on the news. <laughs> it wasn't found by sea experts, it was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What like, do you mean? What do you mean? It was... it was... Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before, I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's, that's, that's the story. It's just weird how stuff's being found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that... I mean, I, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to... If it's a new creature, you don't know what, what makes it happy. When you get a kitten, you go, stroke its head. Loves it. Right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. If I had a little seashell and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, isn't it? It's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh. with you. Oh, as I'm much fun it. as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Wow. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens, because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. <laughs> Fucking hell, more insects! What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. Just... <laughs> trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK, and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? There's two new flies. <laughs> what do you mean? Does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species, and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No. Yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right. That's a fact. So you've got like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? Well, say <laughs> yeah. you call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know. Uh, was say that's orange. <laughs> this is just B. Lively, yeah. No, this is painful. No, but this I'm just painful. making it easy. But Fly B wears okay. a little hat. It's yeah, a little hat. Right, yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over here. This is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species log it, whatever, and then the other one went, oh, 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 keep your pen handy, look at this one, it's got a hat on. So then they, they found them both within the same distance, 
I don't like that sentence. Keep things. going, keep going, keep going. They, no, found, him both, finish. they I, found him both within the same both. distance. <laughs> but without <laughs> interrupting him, <laughs> let him finish this, no. this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkins just said, they found them both within the same distance. <laughs> Think of that! Don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So, so what I mean is, they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies, because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> yeah, because the other one was also odd, they're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd concept? Because <laughs> you think you think of it as like two little um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find out they're both new and they they've got so many. Yeah, they're, both, they're both goths, so yeah. they start hanging out together. Yeah. And this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio. Yeah. I know if I look into that story, it would be ninety percent wrong. Bit tired today because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck <laughs> me! I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's not the age bit, that's amazing. It's the fact of, there's a fella, won't have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yet he was worried about his hairstyle. Right, but well, that's definitely not true either. There was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? Oh, fuck. You wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. <laughs> right. It may be the greatest poem ever written. Is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry. Means, yes. just, uh, no, just, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right? Okay. This is going out all over the world. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, new poet from Manchester now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the air on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. I think he feels as though the final line, I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great, you know, those, it, a summation that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor, I'd the caveman. No, but there's no I'm metaphor doing, in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a, a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked at the day's news. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins, or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas. And no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one I did about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. <laughs> yeah, it certainly would. So. <laughs> That's great! That's really good! Because it's jelly. He's, he's, he's done us there, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. really good poem. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts, a poem. a poem? Just like that. It would be spiteful 
to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, right, emergency and that. I had a uh, tube put on my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was what's the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in. To be just... quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's it's like at Zoo Keep going, all oh, that slow move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, God carry this. So. Almighty. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they you know, they will say they're unconscious. So yeah. they don't whinge about it, they get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> So, you rushed to hospital. So, tell, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain, and I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I've just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage has been done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. did it got badder, did it? So then a I thought I, I, oh, I, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony. Looking on the internet, looking for a sort of Still solutions. looking at monkey news. Uh, <laughs> I was just, I just put in like belly ache and stuff and they were saying me loads of different things. Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The gold has got well, what? Like, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like... A witch doctor who happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of fifth century remedy. Yeah. Written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. Yeah. Uh, what, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were at this sort of old cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're old I cold. Do, I don't know what this is. I, it's, I love this idea that is he, uh... He's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. goes, oh good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old it's, cold. Oh, yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Badness, it's uh, uh, the, the yeah. history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just, you know, it, it, so if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass, and that it holds the cold. But we're not smoking our now, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> That's madness. A plate's not going to work. A pla Famously, a plate oh doesn't God, work. No. Oh God, no! So you put a, a, uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any no, work. That, that didn't yeah. work. So I uh, called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctors then. Good advice. So A lot of people have done that straight away, as opposed <laughs> to going through the plate <laughs> ashtray. <laughs> so he went to hospital, and he went to hospital, and he said, have you got an ashtray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went, no, no, this, is, an ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> what is the closest thing to sort of living that's nothing? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's like the closest, like, do you know at some point something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't, no, I don't understand what you mean. Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's so, right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say, say, like, when you look at a, a stick insect, right? you go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But the, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. There isn't. Difference. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's, it's like camouflage. 
That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> what I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like... They, they, they sort of look like a leaf. Yeah, they're insects that that, that, that have evolved to look like a leaf. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No! What? At no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no! <laughs> At no point did a beetle shag a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it... It, that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but it what, looks like a leaf. But then, how does it meet? How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's not like they, uh, it, 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 the, you know, um, a stick insect to be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. <laughs> This club's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick to it. That's a stick. What, what are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great, slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. Well, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in okay. The, in, the last, in the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is... They've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis, where he got, like, a, a half a million pounds grant from a university, and I said, well, Pilkington seems to... He's done ants and he's done bees. Um, he's, he's followed ants. <laughs> Apparently they're not doing anything. Some of them are lazy. Um, he will grant him another uh, half a million pounds. Um, he's been working on it for a year. <laughs> um, please welcome Carl Pilkington. Carl, what have you found? Well, even though pigeons have wings... They walk a lot. Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used, uh, as, as plasma. But yeah. I have had it verified, because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. Uh, well, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort of well, touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well... Uh... No, 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 no. That's not being open-minded. Open-minded open isn't uh, believing everything you hear. Do You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it. A lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this. What about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form. But, uh, according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? But, but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. If he was above a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite Yeah, quite yeah but big, exactly, really. but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. They're, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. There's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where he got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. So they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, no, the uh, lion's at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in, it, in a bad situation. talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God, you know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right, so there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? They would have been mean? on another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big. big. It's big. It's a big boat. Hey, how long... What was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It's a couple of weeks. Yeah. Two, two of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big, because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, they're next there, two yeah. elephants, and it just, and, and it's just like, it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, 
and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on. But when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you, are you saying that you wouldn't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question not of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> That's the jiggle for uh, excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all uh, legitimate stuff. Ricky and I have had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now, I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it, for her yeah, birthday? It was you a went birthday to the Cotswolds, yeah. so I just went for one night. He got the car and headed off. We found the B and B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B and B, so we had a quick walk around the car park <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday! <laughs> the room was now ready. It's an all right room. Free biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> Like a child, like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. <laughs> no, 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 get off the bed, not all the furniture. <laughs> the room overlooked the car park that we'd already been round. <laughs> <laughs> You're staring at that window. Remember when we went there? <laughs> we'll always have the car park. Yeah. Oh, God. The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> Don't think they are needed. <laughs> we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner. I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of 13 behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. It was only about 11. He thought he was it. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did nout. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. <laughs> a Ford Sloth! I would love that ad campaign! Oh, that's amazing! Oh, God! The new Vauxhall Slug! <laughs> We had a look around the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look around the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> so Su that. Suzanne had had a time so far. She's gone to the Cotswolds, the room wasn't ready. She's seen the car park and they let's go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do that's that every time you, you go do, away? I like nothing. the fact, I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. She just looked out at the car park, just like, memories. <laughs> but look, that's, that's what you do, though, isn't it, when you go to these places? There's nothing else, unless you want fudge. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk around the church graveyard and, <laughs> and have a look. Like it's nothing. Fudge. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. <laughs> 